side. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world die? Please, Lord, give me a sign. A sign. I want to be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't hear shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and to be put down. It ain't your place. All this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The noose it fits. Some loose shit. A stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign Yo! There's no mercy in this world, just hunger, thirsty persons in different versions. Each do what they that shit worsens. Why? Pull back the curtain and you'll see the different vermin. We all have different burdens that all seem to cause disturbance. Yo, do me a favor, don't treat me like a neighbor. Don't need the different flavors of your problems just to savor. I've got my own issues, I need a comb to get through. Don't need to groan with you, just go get your own tissue. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign. A sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign. A sign. That's it, the end of the song. Next time you'll sing along. Trust me, there's nothing wrong. I just need to carry on, cause society's a myth. Put there to make you sit. Listen to what they give. Don't ask questions, shut your lid. Yeah, don't ask. Hey there. Hello, Victoria. Right, I just want to put this up first, just to let people know. And the disclaimer. Right, I haven't spoke about Sebastian Wayne Rogers for a while, mainly because people get a bit fed up of hearing the same news over and over again, plus the fact there's always a load of BS about this case now, and it upsets me, because like I heard someone say the other day, Sebastian is lost. But it's not lost once, he's been lost twice. He's been lost in life, in real life, and he's been lost in the all the BS that is going around. And it's like the attention's gone off Sebastian. 
Even though people use Sebastian's name, the attention has gone off him. And all I've seen on YouTube the past couple of weeks is about Sebastian is I click on Google and I'll go into onto my YouTube channel or onto Google and I go Sebastian Rogers updates. And what does it bring up? The court case. Right? The court case. Which is really annoying to me because okay in a way it is about Sebastian Rogers because the parents, the mother and the stepfather have took a YouTuber to court and what I've done is you know I've got four protective orders in place and but it's not about Sebastian. This is about their parents and the stepfather. Right? There's nothing there, nothing in any of those videos about Sebastian. Right? And now I've just been watching her uh, because I've been off YouTube for about a week because I had my family here. And I find it really hard to do YouTube lives when they're here. I don't like to think I'm ignoring them when I come into my little area. Right? So I like to show I'm here. You got my full attention. <laughs> anyway, so I don't come on YouTube when I have family come and visit. And it was like a week I was off YouTube. And I'm thinking, where is Sebastian in all of this? Where is he? Nowhere. And I was going, I am going to touch on a bit about the court case. Right, but I've just been watching a YouTuber tonight. And I think it's a couple of days old. Or a day old, anyway. At least a day old. And, um, I used to get, I get so mad when I hear every YouTuber's go on about how they find it so bad that Seth brought up the fact about Sebastian. Hi. But what they don't mention is the fact that the reason he brought it out to the public is because Chris kept saying, if people keep asking me why I don't want faith around Sebastian, I will tell them all the dirty details and then no one will want to look for your son. They don't mention that. They just talk about how he mentioned his son being, right? And I'm thinking, it's so annoying. And then tonight, I've sat and listened to this YouTuber, and I thought, yes, finally, I found a YouTuber that is in agreement with what I, I believe, right, and what I think. And she says the same. And the three people on her panel were all in, all in with her, right? They forget that the reason Chris, um, Seth said what he did on the Pascal show was because Seth had, was holding it over his head. If they don't stop questioning me, asking me why I don't want my daughter around your soul, I will tell them all the dirty details. Simple. So, Seth being the father thought, right, well, I'll get, I'll put it out there because I can put it out there and explain a lot better than how they would put it out there. And that's what he did. So, and I thought, wow, about time I heard a channel talking about this even though it's old news, I'm so glad they did talk about it. And it was, what was the channel called? It's Allegedly with Britney. Right? It's on at the moment, but I've got it turned down. The volume on my TV turned down. And 
I thought, about time. Someone asked it. Because they go on about this, like, this court case with Betty, right? And how they showed a nine minute video of clips of, of Betty's lives, yeah? And how people, it's, you need to watch the whole video to get the whole, the concept of it, yeah? It wasn't just, I'm going to bring a gun, I'm going to buy a knife, or I'm going to do this, I'm going, it wasn't nothing like that, that she said in these videos, right? And it was, in my opinion, it was misconstrued at court. And I'm thinking, but a lot of people are doing that with Seth. They're taking what he says, a 15-minute piece of a two-hour video, right? They're taking 15 minutes and cutting that 15 minutes down to literally two minutes and just concentrating on what he said about the song. But they're not saying, they're not looking at why he said what he did. Hold on, I'm just going to go and check them. I've shut themselves in the bathroom. Hold on. My lord, my cat. Right, so I just wanted to get that out of the way first before going any further. Because the hate that is out there for Seth is unbelievable. And okay, I must admit at the beginning, well, even now, I don't like Chris. I don't like Chris. Right? And the reason I don't like Chris is, I, is because I think he's a narcissist. He's arrogant, he's controlling. You know what I mean? And he's nasty as well. And I just don't like him for that. And the one, what took me straight off him, up until then, I was, hmm, okay. There's some red flags in their interviews, lots of red flags, how the story changed, but not his story, but her story. Her story changed, not his. His story never changed, but hers did. The mother's did. So I'm thinking, okay, there's red flags here, and he's a narcissist, he's controlling, he's doing the controlling in the interviews, and all this lot. But when he went on that one YouTube channel, Smiley's well, brilliant YouTube, brilliant live, well done Smiley, right? A lot of information come out on that. And when he mentioned how he used the belt, that was it for me with him, right? I don't care if it was one lick or ten, one lick is too many in my eyes. We are talking of a 15-year-old boy, an autistic 15-year-old boy, who's got the mindset of, I think they said, a 10 or 11-year-old, right? And he tried to make out this happened years ago. I don't care when it happened. I really don't. It happened, and it should never have happened. But what he fails to notice is... When he first mentioned it, he said, they were sitting down, having a dinner. He gave him a lick of, the, of his belt because he didn't have a belt for school. He's then gone to school, told the teachers. The teachers, mandatory, to report it. So on the night, time has come home from school and they're sitting down, having dinner, knock on the door. And this woman was there from child services. And he went, Oh, 
Like, you, we knew her from before. And like, when I said something like, I'm not sure whether that was the exact words she said. And I sat there and I went, oh, John, you're telling me you knew that woman who came to your home from before. So this isn't the first time she's been to your home about Sebastian. Right? So, then, he's trying to say it happened when he was younger. But then he said, he's a 15-year-old lad who was embarrassed. Well, he was only 15 in December last year. And then it was stated that he hadn't been at the family home since the beginning of February. And everyone was saying, why hasn't he been at the end? Surely, I know it's like three and a half hours drive, but surely on a Friday, if you're not working Saturday and Sunday, you'd come home. Yeah? Any husband would come home for the weekend and either go back early Monday morning or drive back Sunday evening. You know what I mean? And I said then, I said, I've got a feeling it's because he's been told by Child Services Department is not to be in the home when Sebastian is there, right? And that is why he was staying in the five-wheeler. I can understand him staying in the five-wheeler Monday to Friday. It's going to save him some money. Yep. But why not come home on the weekend? And that was why he wasn't coming home. And Kate said, oh, but he works a lot of weekends. Hmm, okay. Okay, I could understand that. But for a whole month. And why, when he was asked about what days he was at home in January, could he not tell us? Or would not tell us? So things like that was building up, and I'm thinking, someone's not right with this guy, what he's saying. Right? Little things like that. So that's why I do not like him. Katie, I can point down to nerves, being upset, and everything at the, at the very beginning. I really can. But there were some red flags in her interviews that she was doing. And the major one that got me, right, not the thought, not even the thought, it was when she did the interview with Chronicles of Olivia. And she said, I jumped in my car and I was going up here and I was going up towards school. And by the time I got to the school, he was, and as she said he was, she did the hand motion across the neck. Right? And then stopped. He was what? You know what I mean? He was what? Asleep, on the grass bank, waiting for you to come and pick him up, already at school. What? What was it? But she stopped dead in her tracks and did that hand motion across the throat. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was younger, and I had an argument with someone, and we got split up. I'd be going, you're dead. And I'd be doing the hand motion across my throat, you're effing dead. Right? And I'm going back to work when I was like 11, 13, 15, 16. I don't do that now. I'll just say, get out my fucking face. Before I slap you one. You know what I mean? But, no. So, when I see someone do that across the throat, that means, pff, done for. You're done for. Right? It's, you're gone. Finito. Right? So, that was a big red flag with me, with Katie. All the other little red flags... Like her adding to her story, 
which you don't do if you tell the truth. You don't add on to a story if you're telling the truth. All right? And as I said, it's a story. Are we to believe a story? Do you read a story and think, oh, I believe that story in that book? It's a story. You, do, you can't believe a story. Right? You can believe, you could, if she said this is, if people went around and said it's her version of what happened, she's telling us her version of what happened that day, then okay, that's her version. But we don't have to believe it. But, and like they're saying, this is her story. And you don't believe a story. Story is fictional. Is it fictional or not? So, there are red flags we created, but, as I said, if I had a big enough platform, I would say, okay, I'd have Katie on there. <coughs> no, no problem. I'd be courteous to her. But I would not <coughs> go through the comments and say, oh God, no, we can't ask that question, no, we can't ask that question. If people want to ask a question, I would say to them first, I say, look, there are going to be some questions that could be repeating yourself or whatever. Because I would not censor the questions. Unless someone said, how did you put the dogs to bed? And that question come up ten times. Then I'm not going to ask it ten times. You know what I mean? So... But I'm not going to censor all the questions. Only if they've been repeated. Like, why did you put the dogs in the crate when normally you take them to bed? If someone said that ten times, ten people come up and put that in my comments ten times, I'd ask it once, but I wouldn't ask it another nine times. That's why, that's the only way I would censor the questions. Because you've already had the answer to it. So... Then, Bull and Betty coming on this around, I think Sebastian had been missing about, what, two, three months by then, when she come into it. She didn't come into it from the beginning. As I said, it was Trev time who come in on, on the first day. I came into it on by the Wednesday, which was 26th, by the 28th. I think there was another one or two channels before me that coming on it. Right? But not many channels coming on it until that first interview come out. The weekend before that first interview come out. That's when people was coming in on this case. Right? And I just think those playing catch up. Hi, Karen, good to see you. Good to have you here. Right, so... It's just, you know, but anyway, she's been doing her YouTube lives, but we all know what Bull and Betty's like. Right, she's like a dog with a bone. She's not letting go. But what I don't believe, like, like, you know when she did that trip to Tennessee? Her biggest mistake that, that weekend was actually following Chris's stepfather and uh, confronting him. That was her biggest mistake in my mind. She shouldn't have followed him. She had it on her camera that he was behind her. He took a photo. She had the proof that he was following her. She should have left it at that. Right? And she shouldn't have got zoomed off and followed him and then confronted him. Right? But the fact that they are going after Bull and Betty, when I know for a fact, and I'm going to be showing 
a video thing out. In fact, two videos thing out of a certain YouTuber. And then got took this person to you to court. Right? Now they're saying it was for harassment and what about she's never met them. She's never seen them. So harassment can be verbal. Yeah. She has been a bit verbal about them on her lives. I must admit, not too good. Right? And it's not good that she's having a go about the judge. You know what I mean? I'm alive. You don't. I wouldn't do that. Put that way. I would just say, look, I've been. Yes, you all know I've been to court, but I'm not going to talk about that. And leave it at that. I wouldn't be talking about the judge or anyone. She's too smart for her own bitches. <laughs> Oh, God. Right? So, she's just... It's like you've given her a spade and she's digging a hole. And she she's not going to get out of this hole if she carries on the way she is. So, and then people are going, but she's been silenced. She can't talk about... She can't talk about Sebastian. She can talk about Sebastian. She can say his name. She just can't, cannot verbally um, attack the mother or stepfather. Originally, no, originally I'm from England, UK. I moved up to Scotland, ooh, 2008. Say no, I'm not. Believe me, if I was originally from Scotland, you'd have an even harder job understanding what I'm saying. Because even today, I have problems understanding what people are saying. And I've been up here since 2008. But no, I'm originally from the UK, Birmingham, Birmingham, Birmingham. As I said, Birmingham, West Midlands. So, but Scotland's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I love it up here. Anyway, what? Well, get off that. Let's get off that. <laughs> so, is my screen flashing? So it keeps flashing. You saw a golf game in Scotland today, all women, really? Golf is big up in Scotland, though. I have a brother, which kind of, like, annoys me, because last time I seen him was in 2019 at my mum's funeral, and that was the first time in 10 years I'd seen him. Well, over 10 years I'd seen him. And he said, oh, I suppose we won't see you again for another 10 years. But then I thought, oh, John, I know you've been up to Scotland to play golf. So you could have dropped in and said, and had a cup of tea with me before heading off back home. You could have stayed the night and had dinner. So, but it's big up Scotland, golf is fairly big. Fairly, a lot of people like to play it. They like to get their anger took out on that poor little golf ball. <laughs> right? I'd rather get a tennis racket and smash a tennis ball on against something. <laughs> Wallop. <laughs> or a baseball bat or a cricket bat. Catch that. Right? But, you know, um... I'm say. So we're going to look at, because I thought I'd get the elephant out of the room first. So we're going to look. No, 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 no,
there was a, a YouTube where Chris spoke, yeah? And in this YouTube, someone asked him, has Sebastian ever been to that construction site? And he said, never by himself. We've took him in the car, but he's never been there on foot. And I thought, oh, I am going to have to find that audio and that dispatch call again. Why? Because I know in that dispatch call, it says one of the neighbours in that area where the construction site was, all that, those new houses were being built, stated that they had seen Sebastian there before walking around. Right? But just not on that Monday. So today I have been sitting there going through all these videos. And I swear to God, if I hear any more of this, I'm going to scream. Right? So I don't even have to, I just put little notes down now to remind me about what I want to talk about. Because most of it I know already. Yeah? So, what should we do first? Should we do the dispatch call or should we do Bull on Betty? Um, we'll do, no, we'll get the elephant out of the room and we'll get, not literally Bull on Betty, I'm not taking that literally. It's the white elephant in the room, right? And we're going to pull it up. Oh. Ooh, right. I've, got a download. I've got it on my downloads. Come on, downloads. Uh... Let's have a look, where are we? Talking. Right. We've got... Right, we're going to show the, uh, the, um, it's by hindsight 2002. Right. I could not find it anywhere else, this interview. Can find it on Finny Poulton site, nothing. Hindsight 2002 is the only one I could find it on. So let's get this put up for you. Betty said she's going to double down now. She could go to jail for six years for six while like it's going. I know, but and who's paying for this, you know what I mean? Her subs. It's up, she's paying for all this. And the guy from me, like, she's looking at setting up. You know what, she'd be better just going by the law, not putting any threats out towards, not talking about the mother or the stepfather, right? Do not mention them in her lives. Do not mention anything about the drugs in her lives. Or anyone, right? There has been a phone started. Wow. Right? I heard in this one video that we'll be looking at. Right? That she mentioned then. And this, but I'm going back, what, four or five days now? Because as I said, I was off. Facebook for, off YouTube for a while. Because, um, I had family here. So. And I never come on when I've got my family. But this is the interview. Now, watch... What happened? This is Bullhorn Betty in the background. This is her room. This is her hotel room. 
And in the background, you'll see him turn his head and this bullhorn Betty. So she's sitting there all the time. This interview is going on. She shouldn't have been in the room. I'm sorry, she shouldn't have been. But I hope that's how it goes. Right? So we're going to listen to what they say. Father Seth Rogers is with us and the Rogers family spokesperson, uh, Tony Mathis, as well. Well, thank you both for coming here. Uh, I, I, what's your... Hold on. Hold on. So that I don't get struck, get a strike, I'm just going to play a little bit of music in the background. Okay. Which one should I play? This one. Okay, it's just so that I don't get struck. What's your reaction, uh, Seth uh, and, and, and Tony, to what happened to today or yesterday in court with Bullhorn Betty? And what are your thoughts about Bullhorn Betty and, and what she's been doing? Well, Benny, first off, thank you for having us tonight. Uh, let me be crystal clear about something. That entire family lied under oath to get those protective orders. This family has spent more time trying to silence people than they've spent looking for Sebastian. We know the fact that there's no person walked out of that home. And it makes you wonder what else they're lying about, Benny. It also makes you wonder what would happen if Sebastian would have been able to file a protective order against his stepfather. Seth, your 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 reaction to what what happened and and what is happening in, in, in all of this? My professional opinion, I would say something along the lines of Chris and Katie did something to my son. They're using Sumner County to cover it up and to hide themselves from the actual law. And and let me ask you, Seth, and, and we have we have no independent information. We know that police are saying there's no suspect. No one's been named as a suspect in any of this. Um, but this seems to be, at least from my perspective, Seth, uh, is it a change in the way you are seeing what has transpired uh, through all this? Have, have, are you seeing things differently than you did before? It's the evidence. I still believe my son is alive. I still believe he's somewhere. But the fact is, is that he was at their house last. There is no evidence that he ever left the house. And they, as Tony has stated, they have spent more money and time trying to get people to not speak about Sebastian than speaking about Sebastian. Sumner County hasn't come out since April with anything. And Katie won't come out and speak won't ask for help to find Sebastian. I really have to say that she never loved her son. And on top of that, I have the DCS reports that I've written that I have literally took me an attorney to get them. Sebastian deserves a restraining order from those two psychopaths. Tony, now, You've accused them of lying, the Proudfoots, right? So, did, what's the what were they lying? What were they lying about from your perspective? And again, we have no independent information. Or so, what are they lying about? Right? We know he did lie to the courts when he went to court about his daughter. We know that much because he said that he'd been cleared by law enforcement with the case of his missing son, of it, Sebastian. Well, he hadn't been cleared. No one has been cleared in that case. So that's a little lie there. But I don't know what they've lied about in this case. No confirmation that they said anything that was untrue or verification 
you know, what they said was true, like either way. Um, but what, what's, what were they lying about from your perspective and what's, what's the evidence uh, from your perspective that they are not telling the truth? Well, they actually were lying and it was proven in court that they were lying about what they stated in the protective orders, which was that she had had physical contact with them, that she was following, stalking and harassing them. And even on the stand, Mr. Proudfoot admitted that he had never met her in person. So in my opinion, it's a little difficult to be stalking somebody that you've never met in person. And it goes to the many inconsistencies that have been told by Mr. Proudfoot since the very first interview. Not one of his interviews have matched up, Penny. And when you say the interviews haven't matched up, you're, you're not talking about, so I just wanna make this clear to everyone watching, are you? All right, let's just go back to a sec. Interviews have matched up, Penny. And when you say the interviews like haven't matched up. In my opinion, it's a little difficult to be stalking somebody that you've never met in person. And it goes to the many inconsistencies that have been told by Mr. Proudfoot. Not really. I've heard of many stalking cases where the person who's being stalked has never met the stalker. You know what I mean? They know they're being followed. They know they're being watched. But they've never met them. Right? So they don't know who it is who's following them. They don't know who, anything about that person. They just know someone is following them and watching them. Yeah? So... You don't actually have to meet someone to stalk them. But since the very first interview, not one of his interviews have matched up, Vinny. And when you say the interviews haven't matched up, you're, you're, you're not talking about... So I just want to make this clear to everyone watching. Are you talk, You're talking about the disappearance of Sebastian, not about Bullhorn Betty in, in this case. Yeah, the Bullhorn Betty lies were just another long string in the lies that they've told since the beginning. If you go back and break the interviews down from the very first interview they did all the way from Nancy Grace and beyond before they quit coming out in public, you can see one inconsistency after the next. And the great thing about telling the truth, Benny, is when you're doing that, it's always the same. It doesn't change. So what's the, the most material inconsistency that you believe um, has been stated from uh, Chris and or Katie. Regarding Sebastian? Absolutely. That's what I care about at the Many end of the day. Absolutely. Many inconsistencies told about the phone calls, the time of the phone calls, the bedtimes, what happened after he went to bed. Just, you know, that entire 10 to 12 hour period, many, many inconsistencies. Also, not rock solid alibis, and a lot of time that's unaccounted for. They were also probably the biggest thing, Benny, is that they told Nancy Grace that they were told by TBI not to take a polygraph, and we found out later from TBI that that is one thousand percent not accurate. That's a big one. That's a big one. Okay, Tony Mathis, Seth Rogers is going to stay with us. We've got more to talk about. Um, we're going to take you inside the courtroom so you can hear some of the, the testimony from today. But And you'll see Chris Proudfoot on, on the witness stand. Just want to make it clear, like, the First Amendment versus prior restraint of speech is serious business. And the judge made a decision today keeping her away from them. But how far did it go towards what she can say about this case? We'll be back. Have other people contacted Right? I'm going to say, CP lied about so much it's ridiculous. Proudfoot's left her home to another escape, yes? And didn't think Sebastian was coming home, it seems. They kept the CPS report a secret from Seth. Yeah, but why did CPS... Why? Why did they not contact Seth? Did she tell them, oh, he's like an absent father, he's going to have much to do with him? You know what I mean? 
and that's why they didn't inform Seth. Because he should have been informed about every visit CPS did to that home. That was his son. He should have been informed and he wasn't. And that's another, whether it was a civil case. Ah, that's why then. So I think he's got a case where he could take him to court. Because, yes, he did say himself that Sebastian said he didn't want to go home. Right? And people have gone, well, if that was my son, I wouldn't have took him home. But you can't do that. Right? If he just said, okay, son, well, you stay here. Just stay here. You can stay with me. His mum would have had him in court the very next day. And then she probably would have had the contact stopped all together. So we can't just say, okay, you don't want to go home, you let's stay at mine. He needed something more substantial. If he had any proof that that was going on at home, right? I know for a fact Seth would not have let him go home. I know for a fact Seth would have took Katie to court to get custody of her, her son sooner. Right? But Sebastian wouldn't tell it, wasn't saying anything to his dad. And when he did speak out at school and CPS come to his home, Apparently they said, um, you know, by telling lies you're going to get people into trouble and you, you can get into trouble yourself. Now, if that is true, that that social worker said that to Sebastian, right, they are out of order. You know what I mean? But I don't think it is true. I think that night is when they've turned around and said, look, we, we feel, or maybe a few days later, we feel you need to move out of the family home while this investigation is going on. And that's why you moved out at the beginning of February. Right? But I've got a lot to show tonight, like Silver's on the scene. We've got it's about 25 minutes, 26 minutes into it. Some very interesting information comes up. So we're just quickly going to get through this, okay? You based off of Miss Griffin's conduct on her social media accounts. Hundreds. Okay. How often does that happen? Daily. Is it is it possible for you to avoid the media circuits that surrounds Miss Griffin's conduct? Absolutely not. Okay. Have people gotten your personal phone number that way? Yes, sir. Have they gotten your email? Yes, sir. They messaged you on Facebook? Yes, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, I'm not being funny here, but they didn't get her his personal phone number from Betty. Because at the beginning of this case, I found his phone number. I found his phone number. And it wasn't through Betty, because Betty wasn't even looking into this case thing. I found his phone number. And he kept saying, if you want to, if you've got a question, ask me. So people would message him on Facebook. Right, our law enforcement had CPS records before Sebastian disappeared. They should have never treated it like, really? I thought they only got the CPS report record after it disappeared. I know they didn't give it to TBI, because when Seth finally got hold of it, right, he had like a redacted version. 
book, you could get, even from a redacted version, you can get the gist of what they say. And apparently, TBI, speaking to Seth at the time, asked him if they could have a copy. I'm sure I heard him say, talk about this, and he said, if you want a copy, ask some of your county sheriff's office, they've got the unredacted copy. So even TBI didn't even have a copy of it until Seth, until Seth said, ask some of your county. Oh, yes, they do, don't they? Yes. So, this, as you said, it should never have been classed as a wrong wedding, if that was the case. Never. But I know Seth did mention when he was talking about how he got the copy of it. You know, remember that night, uh, that twat face, Tony, boy? I may not like him, but if, if he's there for, if Seth likes him, that's all, that's all I matters, right? I don't care. But you remember that night, uh, TikTok Tony put it out, oh, you come and join us on the live, uh, Seth will be disclosing the report. Yeah? CPS report. I sat there and I thought, I am going to be in bed by the time that goes live. And B, he's not going to be, say anything because he can't he can't say anything and he didn't say anything what he did say was that apparently TBI had asked him and he said if you want the one one get in touch with some of the county sheriff's office they've got the unredacted one so I remember watching it the next day sort of thing I remember him saying something like that. Not them exact words, it was something like that, he said. So even TBI didn't have it. And they should have had it. Law enforcement should have gave that to TBI straight away when, right? When Sebastian came up missing, law enforcement should have gave that to TBI. And it should never have been classed as a runaway. Never, ever. Yes, I have looked up ways of, I possibly, he could have left that house. But that is just me being hypothetical. I'm looking at different ways. Yep. How perhaps Katie had nothing to do with it. Perhaps um, he met someone while out and about on his little walkabouts. How, or could he have been chatting to someone online while at his dad's? Yeah? We don't know. So that's why I looked at all those possibilities. But then you go back to the beginning and you think, hmm, he had no shoes, no coat, in the February morning, it's going to be cold, it's going to be dark. And all he had was a little, a little pocket, a little tiny little key light. It's like a key light torch. Seth didn't realise he couldn't say anything till after he was scheduled on YouTube because Sebastian was a minor. Yeah. So... But even so, Tony shouldn't have been going around saying what he did. He shouldn't have said that. Right, yeah. Tony came in and he shut, he shut Seth down. Reaching away was a good thing. But now he's letting him loose again. Which is, I think, about time because if they're going to silence YouTubers from talking about Sebastian, try silencing the father. You're going to have a fight on your hands then, aren't they? 
Alright, so let's get Okay. So that's Chris Proudfoot. Bullhorn Betty Feeling goes online. Bullhorn Betty. Provides information. And apparently her viewers or followers are sending messages and attempting to contact Chris Proudfoot. So the judge's decision has prevented Bullhorn Betty from contacting the Proudfoots. But what I heard in the decision was, it sounds like she can still talk about them. She just cannot contact them through social media, cannot contact them through text or email or any other way. He's got to stay away from them. Um, that, like, I, I, I understand that decision. Um, whether you agree or disagree, you know, it's up, it's up, it's up for, for debate, but that's the judge's decision. But it seems that she can still talk about Personally, I wouldn't even talk about Katie or Chris. I wouldn't. If I was born on Betty, I wouldn't even bring them up in my, in my lives. I would concentrate on Sebastian. That's it. Up there. Now, Chris Proudfoot was asked another important question when it comes to a restraining order, right? To stop, to, to, to prevent someone from going somewhere or contacting someone. There's got to be a reason. Uh, he's asked, why are you afraid of Bullhorn Betty? Take a listen. What are you afraid of from Andrew Griffin? What am I directly afraid of, sir? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Well, when you make a video threatening that you want to bring a gun from another state to this state. You know, when he, he, he reiterates the question back to the uh, defense or the prosecutor, you know what he's doing? He's paraphrasing. By relaying that same question back to them, he's hoping they'll open up a bit more on the question. But they don't. They just say yes. Directly in videos related to me, my wife, my family, that's a threat, plain and simple. Okay. She also said she was going to bring a shit that for the record. Okay, let's bring back in uh, Seth Rogers. Uh, now that machete was used in a, in one of her lives, she did mention it, but she used it in the context that you need a machete to cut your way through the brush. That's what the context of that was. Sebastian's dead. Dad and Tony Mathis. Um, just a quick clarification. Everyone's watching that. Um, was she threatening to bring a machete to go after the, the Proudfoots? Well, Benny, you being one of the better investigative reporters in this case, you know that if you take a, a four or five second clip out of an hour long video, you can twist that and turn that into anything you want it to be. When she was talking about the things that she was going to need to be walking through these heavily wooded areas, one of the things that she mentioned she would probably need is a machine. Yeah, over there. But you don't get to see all that because that doesn't fit the narrative. Does that make sense? I, 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 on I, top of that, if if she had stated that she was going to bring a machete, don't you think the felon that made the video for uh, the Proudfoots would have actually clipped that in there? and it wasn't clipped in there. And if you notice the attorney, that shyster that was sitting there representing the Proudfoots and the Bower Sox, when they asked them, when they asked Chris the question, have you been contacted? They never asked who contacted them because nobody that is on Betty's team or my team is actually reaching out to speak to these pathetic excuses for parents. And Benny, if you actually... I sent Chris a friend's request. Never got one. Never got that friend's request. But yeah, Karen, as you said, you didn't realize. Yeah, he noticed all his... He said himself that she was all by the front door. Which I find strange, having the shoes by the front door, when nine times out of ten, when he left that house, right, it would be with his mum, yeah? 
and you go through the kitchen into the garage into the car the only time you go out the front door would be a to go to the post to the post box or b to go and get the school bus well personally i'd say take your shoes off at the front door but put them in your bedroom you know what i mean Or put them by the garage door, by the kitchen, in the kitchen, by the door to the garage. I would say keep your school shoes in your bedroom and keep your other shoes that you wear at home and for when you're out and about with me by the garage door. You know what I mean? I wouldn't keep them by the front door because then he's going to put them on at the front door and traps through the house. But if he's got his bedroom, he's right next to the front door, literally. So he could put his shoes on in his bedroom and literally walk out of his bedroom and out the front door. So he's not traipsing through the house. And if you look at some of those photos of him standing there, he's got his shoes on. So it doesn't make sense to me why the shoes would be by the front door anyway. I come in and if I take my shoes off and I go straight to my bedroom and I take my shoes off. Sometimes I keep my shoes on. All well, depends. Right, I'm not I'm not fussy like a lot of the Americans are. They take the shoes off when they're coming in. A lot of British are. I'm not. Right. But if I take my shoes off, I come in the front door. My bedroom doors are right by the front door. So I come in the front door, walk into my bedroom take my shoes off in there and that way i haven't got to keep moving on from the living room to the bedroom or from wherever but i just find it strange that these shoes were at the front door anyway that's just me actually listen to what was said there in court the attorney asked the question have you been contacted by people regarding things that Betty has been saying. Right. The people that are contacting Chris are his people. They're not Betty's people. They're contacting Chris saying, this is what Betty said today. This is what she said yesterday. Well, all you've got to do is tell those people if you don't want to hear it to quit contacting you. That shouldn't make you afraid of a five foot female as a man that has a strong history of being able to deal with females. So let, let, let's refocus now and, and get back to where what this is really about which is finding your son set so sebastian. what uh, sebastian. sebastian i'm sebastian. sorry yes yeah. yeah to find sebastian um your relationship with your with sebastian's mom seems at this point is is completely non-existent i know early on there was talk about trying to work together and it seemed like you were trying to come together to, to do something, but that that just doesn't exist. What? So what is the status of the search for Sebastian? As you sit here tonight, what is going on? Who is doing what, whether it's law enforcement, um, any private organizations, members of the public, whoever, What is what is the status of all that? We have several different, we have over 50 people that are working on this case. Just in investigators, FBI. I mean, been working with the FBI. That's how we got a reward out there. Sumner County, the people that are in charge of Sumner County refuse to connect the dots. So we have to go beyond Sumner County. My son is somewhere, and me personally, I believe Katie knows. Benny, you can tell that we're a little bit uh, more uptight tonight than we usually are, but we've watched the antics. We've watched Chris smile and laugh and joke in court when we've got a broken father and Seth that's missing his son. You guys sent a very, very professional, independent camera and photographer to cover this court case, a girl by the name of Athena. 
We found out after the court case was over that Chris looked at her and winked at her in the middle of the trial. It was flirty. We, we, we've got a real problem with that when there's a missing child. He's supposed to be married. Yeah. The child's not mean anything anymore. So at the uh, let's let's talk about this now. What can people? No, I think that is why we cannot find this video on Vinny's page anywhere because they'd mentioned a reporter. Right, I can could not find it anywhere on his own YouTube page, on his court TV page. I could not find it. And I think it's because they mentioned that one reporter. There's going to be a lot of people watching right now and say, listen, I, I want to do something. I want to help. What can they do? A lot of things, Vinny. They can pray. They can continue to spread awareness. They can put flyers up. They can talk about him in a positive way, regardless of which side of the family they support. Because remember, this is about Sebastian. It's not about Seth, it's not about Tony, it's not about Chris and Katie or any of the crazy grandparents. It's not about any of that. This is about Sebastian. And if you are here for Sebastian, your focus should be Sebastian, Don't Wayne, Drake, Sebastian. Rogers. That's it, nothing else. Absolutely. He's the one missing. Unfortunately, the judge wanted to sit there and offer his condolences for our loss. My son is missing. I understand that that judge's child passed away, and that made him emotional in this case. Judgment from the judge should have been blind to begin with. He was emotional, and I'm pretty sure my son is lost. He is alive. He is missing. All right, that judge buried their child. Seth. I understand where Seth is coming from there. You know what I mean? Right, when the judge said that. Because you can't give up hope. You, the hope has got to stay there that somewhere Sebastian is out there. Right? Statistically, I would say. Hmm. Oh, young Sebastian just better be alive because I can't take seeing Seth in such pain. Seth is finally breaking his mind. Exactly. My, my, my late husband, we separated before he passed away. But if my kids had been, uh, anything had happened to my kids, he'd be in my face. You know what I mean? From day one, he'd be in my face. But then, then again, me and my husband, even though we didn't get on, we spoke about the kids and what they was up to, their antics and everything. And we still backed each other up on with the kids. Right? So we got very well, even after we separated. And so I don't think I'd have that, I would have had that problem off my ex, off my late husband. But if we was in a position where we wasn't talking, then he could be in my face. So. Rogers. Fashion is a lot. We're out of time for tonight, but I, I appreciate it. Yeah. And we'll we'll stay in contact. Seth Rogers, Tony Mathis. When we right. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Let's just jump this moose. Get in my head. Right. So I hope I hope and pray he is alive. But then with everything going on, all this BS out there, do you think he really wants to come back home? You know what I mean? With everything that's been said about him, put out there about him, he'd have such a struggle if they find him alive. I hope they do. I really do. 
Yeah, Chris needs to back off. Right? And as you say, go see his own daughter. Exactly. Concentrate on your own daughter, Chris. Right? And as to why Katie isn't talking, I don't know. You can't say, oh, it's because she's still upset. It's nearly a year. It's coming up to, what, winter, October, November. How many months is it now? I can't remember. Because, but it's coming up to a while. She, she's gone through the grieving process. Oh, look, the way I see her, she's gone through that grieving process and she's now at that stage. She's, she's accepted. That is not coming back. Yeah. So she knows something happened that night. And I still go back to that there is no evidence, the police have stated there's no evidence that he left without shoes. They've got no, you know what I mean? He could have had shoes on, they're not stating that he didn't. But there's no evidence that he left that house. So where is he? If he didn't walk out of that house, where is he? And so that's what gets me the law enforcement, the some of the county sheriff's office. If they say there's no evidence of Sebastian walking out of that house, then where is he? Why have they not pushed, pushed and pushed and pushed Katie on that? Look, there's no evidence your son walked out of the house, so where is he? You tell us how your son could walk out of this house and not leave a scent, a trail, or anything. Nothing. Plus, why, if he's a runaway, as his dad has said, he had money. Right? He had money saved up in his bedroom. He had a bank card, which would have money on it, so, which was in his wallet. So, if he's a runaway, he just took his wallet, he just took is switch for something to play on, right? Um, what else? Oh, yeah, coat, shoes, his phone. He would have phoned his dad if he was running away. But he didn't take none of them, none of it. And it's just so coincidental that the day before, he had such a great day the day before. I find that in a lot of cases when children go missing, they always have such a nice day the day before. Or the day they go missing. If they go missing in the afternoon or evening, they've had such a great day that day. And all of a sudden they go missing. That's what I find weird in this case. Right, now, what are we looking at? Go back to my YouTube. Oh. Downloads. I think I've come out of this, I think it just... <laughs> right, so... You, they talk about how Betty was stalking them, how they, she drove past their house, how that she, whatever, right? Hold on, no, 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 hold on. I just want to show this one first. This was by the lab, and I'm not showing it all. I'm just showing a clip, small section of it. Right. I'm just trying to get to the place where Seth comes into it.
boiling, waiting for the weekend to be over so I can do something. What 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 do you what are you planning on doing? Do you, I mean, do you have a plan? Or is... something you care to share? If not, I understand that as well. Not sharing because yeah. you know in your chat there there's a lot of people that can still hear me, may not be able to see me, and I don't have to. Hold on. Yes, I believe that all that those videos the mob crew has done on this, I believe he was took to a car. But how he did not leave any scent, I do not know. Was he carried over there? Possible, but there was death, and we're going to be looking at that. Don't worry, we're going to be looking at that. We're going to be looking at that video. I've got it all because, as I said, this is like going over the whole case from day one, plus looking at the court case as well. Look at them, but I know that. CP supporters are everywhere. I hope they enjoy supporting a child abuser. Because those are the people that nearly make me sick in this world. Um, and, I mean, do you want to expand on that or just leave it there? Leave it there. Yeah, you know, and, and I, I have asked the chat. and He's not happy, and I can totally understand where Seth is coming from. And why he's feeling like he is. I really can. Normally, you know, this is a very charged, you know, I, I haven't covered a lot of this lately. And, and I understand that, Josh, because it's very controversial. I mean, no matter what it seems, it's like no matter what I said to people at the very beginning and have continued to say, there's no sides but Sebastian. But everybody wants to make it about sides. And all I want from my side is to find Sebastian and bring him home. That's it. I want to find my son and bring him home and make sure he is safe and healthy. All right. Yeah, look, I, I agree. I, I think that I think that the side the sides is probably the most detrimental. And I, I will tell you this too. I, I have a major problem, not not just with people that attack you and accuse you. But I do have a major problem just in general with people talking about how bad of parents people are when they've only known what they've seen, you know, through, through the media, you know, and, and a lot of these people are, are absolute losers themselves that, that, that attack uh, from behind a keyboard that probably wouldn't want their life put on display in front of everybody. Uh, that's that's kind of how I figure it. The, the whole situation, I, I see it a lot. Um, no, that term keyboard too. warriors, Josh. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that term needs to stop being used because if you're on a keyboard running your mouth, you and your little finger twitches, you're just a keyboard coward. There ain't nothing warrior about you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I mean. The muzzle's off, as Tony has said. So, so Seth, when you said when you said, uh, you know, if you support a child abuser, you know, people are going to say we don't have any proof. Are, are you going? That, is that, that, that that would be that would be very 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 inaccurate. Um, you know, like I said, we we have to be very very careful, and we have to make sure our T's are crossed and our eyes are dotted. Mm. But to make that statement that, that we don't have proof of anything, not specifically that, but anything that we come out publicly and say would be inaccurate. Right. So, so there is proof and uh, you just, you just, 
finalizing how you're going to present it is that what you're saying that's exactly what we're saying right. we want we want to make sure that we're acting within the confinements of the law you know yeah. i did that interview and i said that they're hiding from the real law i meant it they're hiding from the real law because to me sumner county is doing anything and everything they can to cover themselves and to pr protect them and they're abusing the law the law is not to be abused the law is there to protect the citizens against those who are willing to break it yeah i mean I, it, that's that's exactly right i i think that but once again you know when, it, when we're talking about sumner county and I don't I don't really know how these investigations go or play out, but I mean they they haven't said anything. I, I don't know when the last time they said April. something about this case was. Was it April? April. The last time I spoke was before Faith came to visit. Is it April they last spoke? I thought they spoke in May. Yes, one they did some interviews in May. It's been over over three months since um a particular person has anything said anything about their son. Katie stopped talking a long time ago, yet. Uh well Give me one second here. Mods, uh, I'm, I'm seeing a ton of just weirdos in the chat. And I, I, well, if, we need to, if we need to turn on members only, then, then we can. Uh, but just, please just, just toss them. I, 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 they're, they're so rude and just, I would never go into somebody. You know what? I've noticed even on the live uh, uh, videos watching tonight, right? She had it set for subscribers only, right? So people who were subscribed and even members could comment. But if you wasn't subscribed, you couldn't comment. But a lot of these members couldn't even comment. So she had to make it so that all could comment. And after a while, she had to take it back down to subscribers only because they were being inundated with trolls. Honest to God. We chat and act like that. Just get them out of here, please. Please. Or we can turn on uh members only or turn the chat off completely. I mean, this is this is this is why, you know, I don't like doing these. I, I like talking to you guys about it. It's just that people are absolutely nuts. Yeah. They are. It's just so rude. It's crazy. No skin in the game whatsoever. Well, you know, manners anymore either what's that there, there's very little manners left well that's that's what happens that's what happens when um this is what happens when you can hide behind a keyboard right that's why they're keyboard cowards right uh let me see here josh you can always look at these cases and tell the people that are that are actively involved they don't hide from anybody Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. And and I do feel like I do feel like the things that you guys have done is to push forward the case. Uh, I, I don't and Tony, I've said this before. I, I haven't agreed with everything, you know, but who cares? Like, that's not that doesn't mean that I'm like, oh, that guy's an idiot or I just maybe have not agreed with the way that some things uh, have, have shaken out. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you've always been respectful about that. Uh, we've, we've had many, many conversations about different things that were being done. Yeah. But one of the things you always acknowledge is that you don't have all the facts. You don't know exactly why. Yeah, only one detective assigned to the case. That says a lot, doesn't it, from Sumner County? That says a lot when only one detective a day is assigned to the case. 
They're not actively looking. As he said in one of his interviews, when he was at a press release thing, he stood up there and he said, we're waiting for that one phone call to come in and crack this case wide open. They're waiting. Let's just wait for that phone call. They're not doing nothing else to help in this case. And it really, it's a shame. This is why cases go cold. Because, like we, you said at the beginning, we said at the beginning in the chat, see, they had the report from CPS before Sebastian went missing, which would have meant round about February time. He went missing at the end of February. So they had that report round about the end of January, so the middle of February. Yeah. And they should not have just put that as a missing child the first time or run away. Because there was red flags to state he was not a runaway. No shoes, no coat, no phone, no money. Nothing. All those essentials, the money, the phone, the coat, the shoes, the four main essentials. Forget about the switch, forget about even drinks, drinks and food, snacks. None of that was took. If you was running away from home, you'd take a bag with something in it, wouldn't you? Be it a, some bottle of water, some snacks, crisps, whatever, cereal bars, biscuits, whatever, cookies. You'd take something with you, and you didn't. So that's a big red flag to me, and I'm not even a detective or even a, anything to do with police. But as soon as I hear a child is missing and they class as a runaway but they've not took the coat or the shoes or the phone or this or that, I'm thinking, nope, that isn't right. That does not sound right. It doesn't sit right with me. And so I'm going to dig. things are being done, you, you see that they are being done. And I've always taken the time to talk through those things with you and explain to you why we're doing what we're doing. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, the, the guy that is steering that ship, in contrast to what a lot of people think, is Seth Rogers. Mm. And there is not one move made that Seth doesn't agree with. There is not one move made that we don't talk in great detail about. And quite frankly, a lot of these people that, that are given opinions and causing problems and everything else, they don't have a child missing. And, you know, we, uh, we appreciate anybody that supports Sebastian. We appreciate anybody that supports Seth and finding Sebastian. Um, you know, if you have your own opinion and you don't, you don't support Seth and you don't support finding Sebastian and you're not willing to look at all the facts in the case, then we're not really interested in what you've got to say. Right. I mean, no. That I don't agree with. I don't think you need to support Seth. Right? I don't think you need to support Seth. Because that means you're taking a side. Yeah? So I don't agree with that. I agree with being there for Sebastian. As I said, it doesn't matter what side you, you, you are, whether it's you support Seth or you support CP and KP. It doesn't matter, as long as you're there for Sebastian. And when you do a live or a video, you concentrate on Sebastian. And this isn't happening. Uh, that's what I'm saying. You know, I, I there are things about this case that, that I don't that I don't know. I don't pretend to know. I, I don't listen to. I, I don't really listen to the, the whatever gossip there is. You know, I mean. There's so much that has been said, and like I said, this is probably the first show or the, the first time I've done a live about uh, Sebastian's case in probably a month. And uh, you know, every time I do it, I, I'm reminded why. But at the same time, I also feel like that there needs to be some sort of balance. Like I feel personally, I personally feel 
that um, uh, that there's not enough balance. That there's that people are so one sided, uh, leaning one way or the or the other. And when when the simple fact is that Sebastian is the main focus of it. It's not about who wears what or who said what or. Uh, Sebastian you know. is the goal. Sebastian has been my goal since the very beginning when this happened. Finding my son is all that matters to me. And you could do everything perfect, Seth. I'm telling you, you could do everything perfect. You could say everything right. And no matter what people, you can go to any single post, like a popular post, like say, you know, Sports Center, MLB does one. They say something nice about somebody. And within the first two or three comments, you're going to see some jerk off say, just be rude. I mean, it's just how, how the internet it works now, unfortunately. And uh, look, I've taken the brunt of a lot of stuff before. And I know that, Seth, I know that it's a constant for you, but uh, you you seem to be pretty good at ignoring it. Well, it, it, a lot of the stuff does doesn't help bring it, Sebastian home. And one of the things geez. that Seth has been very consistent it's about is if it doesn't involve bringing his son home, he's not yeah. really interested in it. Um, you know, and I've watched you over the last few months. You know, I'll... but wouldn't you think, right? If they've got an upcoming election for a new sheriff. Wouldn't you think they do everything possible? Be out there searching, getting search teams going with every not every day, maybe just every weekend. Get search teams out there on the weekends. Let the the town, let Tennessee, Hendersonville people see you out there looking for this child. Then they think, you know what, this this guy is doing everything possible to find this find this lad but because they know if I live in Hendersonville right if I live there and I and I didn't see the police doing anything on a regular basis to find this lad right would I help be voting for him as a new sheriff I began no because he's not doing nothing. We want someone who's going to be out there organising searches and everything they can. He's running on the post yet. Yeah. There's no one going up against him. So he's going to get it anyway. So, but you'd think they'd be out there on the weekends with search parties looking. Let the people let the people see you're out there doing something. Rather than doing nothing. I'll ask I'll ask you a question if you don't mind. You've broken down a lot of those early interviews. And you broke down a lot of the early interviews that Chris and Katie have done. Mm -hmm. And you've pointed out some of the inconsistencies in those interviews. Uh, sure. multiple things that were said that were said differently the, the very next interview, they were answered differently. Yep. Uh, very, very important details that were answered differently. You've been working with Seth now longer than I have. Have you ever found an inconsistency in anything that Seth Rogers has ever said? No, not off the top of my head. I mean, I'd have to, I don't, nothing that ever stuck out to me. N no, I don't think so. So, you know, when, when people are, are aligning themselves instead of focusing on the child, you've got one side that is that has got many, many, many inconsistencies. And as we said on Vinny's show, if you're telling the truth, you're not going to have inconsistencies because the exactly. truth is easy you to don't remember. Have no, you're right about that. Somebody said something about the, the internet access. I, I don't remember. I don't remember if that was an inconsistency or not. I, you know, I know Chris and Katie said that he did not have access to the internet at their house, but that he did with you, Seth. He could get on my PlayStation and play under my account at any point in time. I didn't right. limit him. Uh, I mean, right. we're talking about a child that... 15-year-old child. That, that I had asked many times, would you like to have your own account? And he says, no, Dad, I'd rather just play under yours. All right. Well, you know, when you give the child the opportunity to, to grow and you give the child the opportunity to make his own decisions, it's going to allow him to grow and blossom bloom and to grow up yeah exactly but literally it's like you know he had his own 
on Netflix. He has his own profile, which is, you know, he should. He's 15. When I first got Netflix, he was like six. So he, children's profile, period. So you can watch children-based stuff so you're not watching, you know, blood, guts, gore, horror movies, and, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's the same thing with the internet. I had conversations with my son. I told him, listen, you don't know these people on the internet. All right. The only people you should be communicating with are people that are on my friends list because I know them personally. I've met them. I've shaken their hand. I've known them for 10 plus years. So what's the point of, you know, and he's like, that's fine. He'd rather play with these people because they play the game and he's there to play the game. Not chat. I mean, well, and the other thing too, Josh, is we're talking, everybody wants to label Sebastian as an autistic child, but they forget that he was a highly functioning autistic child. And in a lot of situations, you wouldn't know that he was autistic unless he had been labeled as such. So if you consider him a fairly normal 15 year old child, I would ask anybody that's ever had a child of that age. And I ironically have a 15 year old of my own. I don't know any 15 year old child anywhere that doesn't have access to the internet. I've never even heard of that at that age. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't either. I don't know what. It's like when my one grandson comes on, a, on the weekend. He's coming up to seven. He'll be seven tomorrow. It's his birthday tomorrow. So he's seven tomorrow. And he comes to mine and he's got his tablet and he's got YouTube kids on it. Well, I've now put YouTube Kids on my TVs, on the two TVs that I have. Well, I've got three, but only I only use the two. The one in the living room and the one in my bedroom. The one in their bedroom, I've got to get a new, what we call a now stick, now TV stick. I've got to get a new one for in there. But he doesn't watch it in the bedroom, he watches it in my room. So I put now TV uh, Kids YouTube on. But then I'll say, Gran, can I have your YouTuber? And I know what he wants. He wants, like, you can't always get the Minecraft channels that he, he likes to watch on YouTube, kids. You can't. And so I go, yeah, okay, but you can have it on in the living room. Okay, so I put it on in the living room for him. That way, I'm stuck there watching YouTube Minecraft with him. But at least I'm monitoring him, right? He's not watching anything with any foul words in it, any violence in it, nothing. So he's happy that way. So by having it on my TV, he's monitored. He don't, and even when he plays my, has it on his own tablet, he's got a Minecraft game that he plays and screw the school, right? You can't chat on it, you can't chat to your friends on it, it's just a game you play. He loves playing that, but he also loves to play that game on his tablet and have like, he's a bit like me, he's got to have some background noise. It's like when I'm doing my 5G time of day, I like to listen to some YouTube channels or something on the TV. So, it's a bit like me, he's got to have some background noise as well. But, I have no problems with him. So, I, I monitor, I watch, I sit there all weekend. I'm getting to like Minecraft. I'm getting, I'm getting to learn a few tricks of the game, believe me. I might even download it and play it on my laptop. Because I'm getting, I want to play it. The point would be? I mean, most of these kids have $1,500 iPhones at 15 years old, and they've got access to the internet through their phone. They've got, you know, they've got access to, uh, you know, to multiple different TV platforms. They've got access to video games, you know, and, and parents do monitor those things. But I don't know any parent that would not give a 15-year-old child any access to the internet. I mean, that's, that's where a lot of these kids learn and grow and research, and, you know, it's a part of their school and, and things like that. So to me, it's more odd that he wouldn't have access. Well, actually, that's how my, my one grandson learns. He knows how to change a tire on a car. Yep. 
seven to Mara and he knows how to train. He's not doing it physically himself, but he knows he could stand there and tell you what to do. You know what I mean? And that's through watching certain channels on YouTube. And as I said, when he's here, I do monitor what he's watching. Even when he's on his tablet, I monitor what he's watching on YouTube. But he does only have YouTube kids on his tablet. So anything he watches now is on my TV. And I'm either in here on my laptop, but I can I can see my TV from here. I've only got to turn around, I can see my TV. So I can see what he's watching. Or if I'm in the kitchen, my kitchen is off my living room, so I can hear. I've only got to pop my head around the door, I can see what he's watching. And if it's anything that I'm not happy about, then I say, switch that one off, put another one on. Go through another channel, please. You know what I mean? And he does. I don't get any problems off him. That's than that he would. Well, I mean, he'd have access to the internet at school. Right. I mean, with a lot of filters. A particular person got upset because he had access at school to get his FFA certificate that was given to me by the school. He had to have internet access to take all the tests and stuff for it. And somebody got mad because he had it. But yet, that person also wouldn't show up at the school to be given it, the reward or the award. Uh, what was, I mean, what was the reason that he was upset about it? Because they didn't allow him to have internet access at home. And they were upset that the school gave them gave him internet access to take the test. Are you joking me? Are they, is he is this for real? The parents, the mother and the stepfather were upset that he had internet access at school. And that he got that reward. Remember that reward he was given? That was given to his dad at the one of the vigils. Oh my God. I, I never knew that. That is, oh, I, I, like my jaw just hit, literally hit the floor then. And finish out the course. Yeah. All right. I mean, the, the, yeah, the internet is accessible, you know, all over the place. I, I really don't know. I don't I mean, I don't know that many 15 year olds anymore. I used to when my kids were that age, <laughs> the Internet was uh, what kids thrived on. They still do. You know what I mean? 15 year old I know is my son. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, every, everybody's online. Everybody, everybody plays. And and I think the, the thing that people get mistaken is being on the Internet, playing video games is like different than going to chat rooms. I mean, it, it, it's it's different. It's not the same. Like, it's not like. You know, I'm, you can exchange messages with people and stuff like that, but it's it's pretty like out in the open. You know, if you're in a like a server or whatever, but it would all come back to your account, right? That's what you said. Correct. Right. And they took my stuff and they went through it and they gave me all of my stuff back. They just never gave me Sebastian's stuff back. Yeah. So when they returned it, what did they say to you? Here's your stuff back. That's it. They didn't say, uh, you know. No. They took. They take. They took all my electronics. And then what they do is they download everything from the hard drive. Right. Okay, so I have to give them all my passwords for all of my accounts so that they can access it. So I gave all the passwords for all of my accounts. They have... I'd be fecked if they ever needed my access for all my accounts. Because I can't remember the passwords for half of my accounts. That is bad. That is bad. I tell you a story, years ago, years and years ago, my son was at junior school. What? No, infant school. Infant. Was it my daughter? I'm not sure if it was my daughter. I think it was my daughter. My son was in juniors by then. And every Friday, they had an assembly where they received certificates for, I don't know, for, and it would take, could take a few weeks to get that certificate. You earned it by your behaviour, by your attitude in class, your willingness to work with others and all that sort of thing, right? So it wasn't, 
oh, well, you're doing good in your English today, you'll get a certificate for it. It wasn't like that. It could take a week or more to get this certificate. And I stood there waiting for my daughter to come out, and this child come out, all smiles with this certificate in their hands, and you know what the mother did? I, I, I swear to God, I could have knocked her flying. The mother stood there, tore it up in front of her child, their child, their son, sorry. You don't deserve that. I swear to God, my friends were holding me back because I was going to lamp a one. Because I worked, I helped out at the school certain days of the week in the afternoons and things like that. So I know what the children used to have to do to get these certificates. They used to have to work really hard to get these certificates. And when that child walked out and the mother just tore it up, I was fuming. Yeah, I don't know my passwords. Uh, I wouldn't even know my password for my YouTube. I'd have to say, I'll tell you what. Let me open up my laptop. I'll open it all up now. And I'll open up my Facebook. I'll open up my X. I'll open up my Instagram and whatever else. My YouTube. It'll all be open for you. There's my laptop. You know what I mean? Because for them to log in themselves, I. Yeah, right. Forget it. I don't know my passwords. All of my stuff for two weeks. And then, I mean, they took Sebastian. His grandma bought him, like, a tablet, like, pad thing. Mm -hmm. and you know how electronics are if, if they run out of juice for a long period of time and then you plug him in and it takes, you know, a couple minutes for it to get enough juice to show you that it's charging? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, they took one of his electronics and they plugged it in, and it took 15 minutes for the computer to actually recognize that it was being charged. They turned it on, and the detective looked at it was like, well, this hasn't been used since 2021. I'm like, yeah, he used it when his grandma gave it to him in Texas for Christmas. We got home, and he set it over there next to the charger, and hasn't turned it back on, and it died. They still have that. Something that hasn't been used in three years is, is evidence that he might have been online. And when you look at it, he's got his Google account. Well, his Google account is underneath my Google account. So anything that he does on his Google account, I get an email about it. Yeah. Yeah. Get an email every week that says where he's been, what he's been looking up, everything. Because it's, it's literally a parental account. Did, that he, did he know that you can see it? Huh? Did he know that you could see uh, his activity? No. Because yeah. I remember I, I used to do that with my kids and I would tell them, like, I can see everything that you're doing. Uh, I just want you to just know that. I guess, you know, and it wasn't, to me, it wasn't, it's not spying or anything. It's just, I just wanted them to know that, uh, yeah, I, I, I monitor when uh, goes on. And, and that's what, you know, some parents tell their kids and some don't. I mean, there's no right or wrong answer. Well, to, to have the freedom. And if I had gotten a report and looked at it and thought, well, you know, this is kind of, you know, a little bit iffy, then I'd ask him about it. But most of the time, he was on YouTube watching videos. He was on YouTube watching videos. And the worst part about it, in my opinion, is he was watching, he would watch videos on how to deal with being bullied. To me, that means he's using the internet to teach himself on how to deal with problems in his life. As a resource. That's sad. And that was back in 2021. And he was looking at videos on how, on how to deal with bullying. That is sad. When you think he went missing in 24? 24. Three years. I think he was bullied at school. All right, so that is shame. Which is what it's supposed to be. People ask questions, you, you gotta, you know. Yeah, but if I if I saw on my grandson's Google search videos on about how to tackle bullying, how to survive bullying, I'd be I'd be going, hey, why are you looking at stuff like that for? 
Is there something going on that we need to know? You know what I mean? Because you wouldn't be looking at that if it was if there wasn't. So, $1,500 phone in your hand and you can't have enough common sense to sit there and Google search it. Mm -hmm. You know, but I would take that information and then when I had conversations with my son, I would incorporate that into my conversations. Because I want to be there for him. I want to be able to teach him what I know. So that way he doesn't have to go to the internet. He's got a dad. Yeah, look, look, the internet is, is part of life. It really is. It's a huge part of life now. I mean, none of us would be talking right now if it wasn't for, for the internet. It's, it comes with a lot of good. It comes with a, a lot of bad. But I mean, it, it is a resource that almost every job uses. I mean, Tony, I'm sure you use the internet for your job. And, and uh, as well. I don't Google every day. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's weird. It, it is strange to cut off that kind of access from. I mean, if you look at it, the fact is, is that there were people in that neighborhood that knew he exists because the bus stopped and he would get on and get off but they they didn't see him they didn't see him playing with other kids in the neighborhood they and if he didn't have internet access or any type of access in the house then i'm sorry i know people in jail that have internet access more than my son did yeah they do they absolutely do have internet in jail as well people have tablets in jail I mean, that's a thing yeah. prison too I have to I have to make sure that they all you know hey come charge your tablets because I'm closing down the the charge box you know oh you so they they don't have to turn those in they just it's just the they can't charge them till the morning or something well when you go into lockdown you can either have it on the charge so that it's available when we serve breakfast or when it dies it dies no that's interesting um Charlie Bishop says here uh, court TV removed yesterday's interview is that true uh, I don't know. I talked to uh, Justin a little earlier tonight. He said that it was up. Uh, mm -hmm. He said that it was part of the entire show, so it may not be under Sebastian's name. And it might not also be on uh, YouTube. Some, I mean, they do have stuff that is exclusively on their website as well. Yeah. And I'm going to say, I couldn't find that interview on their site. So it could be on their other title. I don't know. And. I found it through and hinds that hindsight for two thousand and two. That's the one I thought it was um that their channel but it wasn't it was hindsight two thousand and two and I thought Hold on. So that's the only one showing it like that. You know uh southwest four by four uh we we agree with that um you know it's just uh the optics in this case don't change and if we believe that chris and katie were told not to go out and search for their son which is what they alleged early on you know i would simply ask you the question josh if one of your children were missing would somebody be able to convince you not to go look how no i mean no. It, it, you know it, it, and i'm not being dramatic when i say that but you know god himself could wouldn't convince me really yeah wasn't. i mean and you know it's it, there's just too many things i mean generally if you know that you left your iphone on the table you're not going to go looking for it because you know where it is and oh, that's, know about that. that's generally when people phone. don't look is when they know where something is so the optics in this case are what they are we didn't create them uh we didn't create seth's off i've now got go set on my phone if i lose my phone well i can't find my phone I just click on my box and I, I hit the, um, what is it I go to? Oh, hang on. Find phone. Find phone. It's not working. It's not working because my phone is right by me. Well, yeah, I've got it on my phone, on my watch, so if I can't find my phone, it's quite a lot, because I put it down, and I think, well, where have I put it? 
You know what I mean? So, I did lose my friend. Optics. He created them. You know, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. Seth's body of work, since his son went missing, is his body of work. And Chris and Katie's body of work is their body of work. And, you know, we didn't ask them not to go looking. We didn't ask them to not take a polygraph. Those are decisions they've made, and they have to live with those choices, right, wrong, or indifferent. Yeah, and I, I'm going to address this this comment really quick here. Uh, Keisha says, I, I don't understand why you worry about CP, KP instead of searching for Sebastian. Well, the problem is that, that Sebastian went missing on their watch. I mean, that, what do you mean? Worry about them, and they're at the center of this. If, yeah, if, I, if he was with... If he was with Seth when he went missing, uh, Seth would be under even much more scrutiny. Oh yeah, than he is now. Imagine more away at work. Yeah, Imagine. Josh, and, and no, and no disrespect to Keisha, uh, n- none at all. But you know, Keisha, if you have a child and that child goes missing on your watch, everybody's going to be worried about you. Of course, I don't. I don't understand that. I really. I get. I get what you're trying to do. I get where you're trying to go. But I mean, you, you're short a couple bricks to get to the to the platform because it just doesn't make sense. Of course, they're going to worry uh, about Chris and Katie because I think that I mean I would be hard pressed to find people to, th- that would say that they don't know more than than what they claim to. And I, one thing I have heard is that Chris says, you know, in time, I, I, I can't remember where I heard him say this, but he said something about in time, uh, you know, more questions will be answered. Have you guys heard him say that before? Yes, I have. Yeah, we've heard him say that. We've heard him say that Sebastian will never be found. Yes. We've heard him say that this will be a case that will be studied for years to come. Yeah. You know, those those aren't things that a normal grieving parent would say. Mm. Gotcha. No, I mean, I I think that if there is, <laughs> when he said that, and I, I cannot remember when he said that, but it wasn't that long ago. I, I don't understand if there's other things that, that can be said. Why is it now's, now's the time. Yeah. What are we waiting on? I mean, what, seven, almost eight months? Yeah, so and I mean... I don't understand know, that. You know, yeah, Josh, I've spent probably days. three or four different full weeks in the Hendersonville area uh, since, oh, in the last five and a half months, I guess. And the overwhelming majority of the community feels it's the same way we do. Their opinion is, is exactly what our opinion is, which is that Chris and Katie know what happened to Sebastian. And you can talk to a hundred people in that community. You can even talk to law enforcement officers that don't know you're involved in the case. And they'll tell you that the overwhelming majority of the community feels that they have something to do with this. So or, we're not, we're or, not or in a minority. Knowledge, right. I mean, or, or knowledge or knowledge. Yes. Yeah, right. And something to do with it would be having knowledge and not sharing it. Of course. I mean, if you have any, look, they don't have to tell the public. And if there are things that are nefarious that they have talked to law enforcement about then fine you know but they don't they don't have to tell the public that it's not illegal to lie to the public however it is illegal to lie to law enforcement and and that's just where it is and i hope i don't know i mean it it sounds like because none of us know what went on you know in the interview rooms but it sounds like they just flat out say they don't know anything yeah and you know it just contradicts they back law enforcement and they're putting all their their trust, hope, and faith in law enforcement, but it's law enforcement that's telling us that there's no proof that that child ever left the home. So that was told to you, that was told to you guys directly. Is that right, Seth? That was actually stated in the last time Credit did a what public announcement or whatever they call it. Who who said it? Credit. It was a it was a press conference. There. Okay. The and, and so they just said that they had they have no evidence that he ever left the house. Correct. Uh, what, 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 do you, what do you take from that? I mean, I know what I take from it, but what do you take from it? Well, you heard what I take from it when I decided to tell Vinny yesterday. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and if you if you're breaking the case down, you know, there's very few, few ways again that that he could not be still in that home and there be no evidence, meaning no ring doorbell cameras, no dog scent, and the only thing that I can come up with is that he left in a vehicle. He gets out in the garage in a vehicle and, and leaves that way. There's something strange to that middle of the night video. Oh, you know, those lights. Uh, I think that that, ha- that kind of is looming over this case. Uh, I certainly don't believe that the, it's trash trucks. I don't think trash trucks collect that early. Maybe somewhere in the boonies. Uh, but 
from everything that the neighbors said that those those aren't trash trucks uh lights that people believe that they're flashlights and that there was possibly a car uh parked you know around uh i mean if if, if you think about it from a, a occam's razor standpoint in a quiet neighborhood like that i mean what are the chances that they're flashlights a strange car that people don't recognize uh, in the same at the same time a 15 year old boy goes missing i mean that that doesn't is that happenstance i mean that can't be can it i mean i guess it could but i i, I just don't believe in coincidences of that magnitude do you guys believe that that there's something to that though that that video we don't believe it's a trash truck right uh seth and tony say uh stay strong praying for sebastian to come home with you soon i'm saying the key is the flashlight video if cp was so upset that video was out then it has something there he doesn't it didn't want out i mean that's a good take here's a uh, no evidence he ever left the home sumner police that's true uh kids have to learn at some age i agree with that as well i agree seth uh chris was not happy chris was not happy when the dispatch call got released right i'm gonna end this here on the, no not this show not the live just this video right because i've got other videos i want to show you Right, and hold on, let's just turn this music up a second. Only have it on to so that it, it's in the background, so it kind of like alters the video. Anyway, so let's create it to the lab. And I saw that today because, as I said, I've been playing catch up, I play catch up a lot on these videos. So there's that, and then I found the video with the old dispatch audio, which I want to show you. But I also, first of all, before I do, I want to show you this one. And where is it? See, I think this is the one. Oh, let me just chop it there and go up to 20, right about here. So we'll start it from here, okay? I might go back just a little bit further. Okay, we'll start it from here. Listen to this very carefully. So if I didn't work for four days and had a four days off, I would go to my family. I would go to my family. I would go to my wife. Where did Chris go? We don't know. He says he wasn't in town. You're telling me you had four days off, allegedly, and you weren't. You didn't come home to see Katie? Question marks. So we go back to no distractions. But these things are question marks because, ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion, I feel strongly about this. Chris and Katie know what happened to Sebastian. There you go. He said it. Well, we're all saying it. Okay. I say Katie definitely knows theory what Theory on this guy, not my theory. Theory on this guy is Chris's parents were involved. And with the whole RV situation and them getting their RV and them going to Alaska, that he feels strongly that that could be where Sebastian is. Somewhere between Hendersonville and Alaska. I know other people have. By just sharing what he told me, what he believes. And... Other behavior is everything we've heard on the calling interviews out of his own mouth, how he gets irate, how he gets angry, and people will say, why are you getting so angry? That is allegedly from this guy's opinion how he is. He's that way. He can be that way on the job site. He can be that way when you go out and have some beers, when you go out to dinner. It's just it's just a personality trait. Yeah, I used must... to think it was something because of the stress of Sebastian being missing. And maybe they didn't know, and maybe he felt like he was. He gets angry because he's a narcissist, and narcissists like everything their own way. They like everything done the way they want it done. And if it isn't done that way, they get angry. And as I said, you can't be a narcissist and live with a child and live with a child who's autistic because. They see things in a different way to 
like me or you. And you have to put yourself in their shoes, sort of thing. Now, I talk a lot about my one grandson, but the other, I've had my other grandson here this weekend. And he's totally different to my, my one grandson. Right? They're, he's on, the grandson that was here the weekend, I was told he was on the spectrum. Anyway. He's totally different to my other grandson. But, so, he's easier to work with. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't go off into this imaginary storytelling. My other grandson is big, big on storytelling. He, he goes on about comics and... Uh, There's a comic or something going to hit off, going to blast us apart and all this. It's so, is, and you have to play, and you're walking along the road and I go, duck, there's a, there's a fireball coming. And you're walking along the road and I'm actually ducking. People must look at me and think, what's she doing? You know what I mean? But I'm with my one grandson and his imagination is wild. Absolutely wild. He calls this area, which is my, what I call my little office, right? He calls this area his lab. This is his lab, where all his signs, all his little signs, projects and whatever, he comes up with in his head, he does. Where my one grandson that I had this weekend, it's totally different, it's not like that. He, right, he talks, he talks... He tells you things uh, that are happening now, right? Now. Not, he, he's in a storyteller. But he's so darn cute. He fell out with me the weekend. My two cats were fighting, <laughs> right? And um, the one cat was lying on the floor and my grandson went over and stroked him and he scratched at him, right? You little fecker, you scratch. Don't you dare go for my grandson. That's what I say to my cats. You don't touch my grandkids. Right? I'm sitting there and these two, then both the cats were going around my grandson, who was on my, my daughter's lap at the time. And at first I thought, oh, look, they're coming to see that you because they've upset you. But then I noticed they're looking in their eyes. So I get up to go and get my plaster. My daughter stands up. She sees the two cats coming round either side. She stands up to go and wash this scratch on his hand. And it's quite a nasty scratch. And as she stands up, my other cat then swipes at him and catches his leg. All I've heard is my daughter screaming, Mom, Mom, Mom. I've opened the kitchen door, grab my daughter, and she's got the little boy, a little boy, grab them, get him in the kitchen, shut the door. The cat's run off. But my other cat, my cat, Toby, oh, he's, he's really fierce. He's hissing and everything happening. I'm going, come on, go for it, mate. Just go for it. Right? Eventually, I had him, got him into my bedroom. Right? And I put a cupboard in front of the door because my son and his wife and my other two grandkids were coming. And I didn't want them going into my bedroom and letting the cats out. I did go and check on my cat. I took the cat little train there, which I did not like the fact of. Took them the food in there, the water in there, made sure they had enough food and water all night, everything. Kept checking on them. Ringing in the morning, that was fine. In fact, I was going, meow. As I was saying, I'm sorry. No, don't work. You attack my grandson, you're staying in here until he's gone home. So once he went home, I let them out. And they've been fine. And I said, why it was, because Vince, they was, they was in like this fight mode, my grandson went over to stroke him, but he didn't realise they're still in a fight mode. Right? So my one cat struck out at him, because he's in this defensive mode, and then the other cat come up, thinking, hold on, you're having a go at my, my brother here, and he's attacking me. 
I thought, oh my lord. And I felt so sorry. And then we're playing about, and you're sitting on the arm on my chair the next day, and we're playing about. And I just kind of like gave him a push a little bit too hard. <laughs> he went flying off the side of the sofa. But as he's landing, he put his hand down and he hurt his wrist. So, I don't love you. I'm not coming back here again. He's going, he's going oh, you know what I mean? So, I said, you'll go to school. And his teachers go, what did you do at school? Uh, in your holiday, you go, well, my grand's cats attacked me and then she pushes me off the arm of the chair and I hurt all my all my wrist. You know what I mean? I think I can't wing here. So it's just the way it is. Because being attacked, I don't think it takes that. From what I'm hearing, this is who he is all the time. He's a narcissist. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll sum this up and I'm not trying to assassinate a character here. I'm not trying to do that at all. I'm just trying to see what kind of stepdad was in this house with this boy who is now missing. And I feel like this stepdad is hiding things. It's a consensus. He's not a likable guy. I've said this before. Based on his own words, he makes himself unlikable. Well, now I've spoken to two different people who share the same feeling. Just not someone you can Exactly. Trust. Okay. There's a few choice words that I say. I'll keep it clean for this. I won't say those words, but it was strong opinions from both. Okay. Okay. So the other thing I was told, and I'll be very careful on this. I'm gonna say it, and I'm gonna jump. I've got the volume full up. Allegedly, in this guy's opinion, like I said, if I was in a court of law, this would be hearsay. I'm just sharing the message. Allegedly, in this guy's opinion, he overheard Chris say at one point in time couple of years ago, several years ago. Actually. This is allegedly. Right? I got two things. One other thing is that if I ever let, if I ever unalive someone, you would never find the body. If I ever unalive someone, you would never find the body. This is an alleged over here from a person telling me in their opinion, from what they heard him say, if I unalive someone, you'd never find the body. Why do I bring that up? I only bring it up because out of his own words, Chris keeps stating, you're never going to find Sebastian. It does. Was what he said three years ago a foreshadowing to where we are now? Allegedly. Allegedly. Hearsay. And lastly, and this goes to, can he trust a Chris Proudfoot? This guy worked with Chris many years ago. And we all know that at that time, three years ago, he was still or was married with Katie. And Sebastian was his stepson. These guys worked with Chris and never knew he was married and never knew he had a stepson. They were aware of his daughter. They were aware of his daughter. They were. Three years ago, they never knew he was married. His workmates never knew he was married and never knew he had a stepson. Wow. Why didn't you say? Let on that he was married. People have said, well, he doesn't wear a wedding ring. My husband never wore his. He never wore his wedding ring, apart from on the wedding day. And once we come back off our honeymoon, he took it off to one day and he never put it back on. I thought, well, fuck you. You know what I mean? So, but my husband never used to wear his wedding ring. But I used to make him wear it when he went out. When he went out with the guys, get that ring on. Get that fucking ring on. So he did wear it when he went out. But to not talk about your wife, it's strange. We're not aware of his stepson, Sebastian Rogers, or his wife, Katie Proudfoot. Allegedly, from what I was told. So. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it other than telling that this guy was more than happy to tell me these things because he feels strongly one of the first things out of his mouth. Chris had something to do with this. I do too, in my opinion. Once again, hey, come here, take a look here. None of this is fact. It's our opinions. But in our opinions, and we have the right to voice our opinion, Chris is hiding something. Katie is hiding something. I believe the Bauer socks are hiding something. What did these four do? And that's where we need to what we need to find out 
and law enforcement needs to find out as we continue to not have distractions and find in some our that's why they're trying to shut everyone down by going after one youtuber could put the fear into other youtubers that you know what i can't afford to go to court i can't afford because a lot of these youtubers use this as an income yeah i don't i do this because i've always had something about crime always liked something about crime always for years and years right i did at one stage think about going to doing a course in law and then going to college and all that union all that lot and i thought no i'm too old for all that now well i had kids at the time so i didn't bother but um they want to by shutting trying to shut down one youtuber could possibly make other youtubers especially in the usa think you know what well, i'm backing off from this case this is getting too too heavy now and that's what they want i i haven't backed off from the case i just don't go live with this case as often as i used to right i just don't go as live as often as i used to because i can't see the point in flogging a dead horse because there's no information coming out i've decided to do a live today because of what i've been seeing over the last five days for while i was off while my family was here yes i was keeping up with it i was watching it on my phone you know this afternoon i'll just quickly log into my laptop and just check my messages and emails and things like that and i thought I wanted to do the live I did last night on Diggy Coombs. I wanted to do that before my daughter came, but I ended up having my grandson here, but so I didn't get to do it. So I wanted to get that one out of the way, finito with that one. Then I thought, well, I'm going to concentrate on Sebastian Rogers for Wednesday, which I am. And I was coming across all these other YouTube, like this one, and I thought, oh, John, they just took uh better to court and got uh what is it called um protection orders out of her for because of what she'd been saying and doing how she'd been stalking them how she'd been going past their house driving past their house you know i've got a video of him driving past their house on the night time right he's been to his i don't know if he's been to his works but he has been to a couple of the caravan sites around right yogi bear and another one he's made phone calls and everything to them um i believe he has spoken to i'm not sure he's done other things as well so He's being up Mary's magical whatever place well, where Sebastian used to love to go. If uh, we found on one of his lives, he found a big heap of dirt in a pile, which looked a bit sus. So I watched a video all a while back now of where he went with a spade to dig that dirt up. Right? And that's on um, public property. Uh, that's on parkland. And he was going to dig it up. But no one's taking him to court. They just concentrated on BHB. Right? Thinking we'll concentrate on one, we'll get this done, and then that's going to put the fear of life in others. But you know what? I'm from the UK. So do your best. Right, I know over here in the UK, we've got a government now where if you say something against a certain race or a certain religion, you can end up in prison. Yep. 
if you put a if, if you put a comment on X or on a Facebook page or anything like that about a certain race, a certain religion, whatever, right, you can end up in prison. So we know how it feels to be silenced. Our job is to find him. Let's go find him. Let's go find him. Let's keep searching for him. We just talked about search recap. We're coming up with where we're going to go next. Real quick on the court ruling. So thank you to the guy. He knows who he is. Said I could use his information. I appreciate him. He was a good guy. And uh, I'll probably speak to him again at some point in time. But uh, thank you for that time and your time and, and sharing what you did with me. Um, because what's the opposite of that? If the opposite was great person, uh, never said anything about uh, certain things he said, not an aggressor, not someone who gets in fights, not someone who does things like that, then it's a different person, right? But a lot of what we've seen, basically what you've heard Michael and seen on the channels and the interviews, that's him. That's him. Angry, mean. So now jump into the court ruling because it also, and this one can become a distraction, but it shouldn't be. Listen very carefully here. Okay, let's stop for a minute. Let's do this. Say his name. Sebastian Rogers. Sebastian Rogers. Sebastian Rogers. Easiest thing you can do, say his name. Gone 231. Excuse me. Yes, 231 days. It's 33 weeks. I get the day. 33 weeks. Today, 33 weeks ago. 231 days. That's so a different time. We all know the creator out there um, was pulled into court, protective order, all this. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to be watching this and listening. If you have a YouTube channel and it's not about Sebastian, if you just have a YouTube channel about anything, you do a daily vlog. You walk around and you ride a ride and give your opinion on it, okay? You see a show and say, oh, the guy was no good, yeah? We all have our right to our opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, this creator has never met the Proudfoots, okay? She's never spoken to them, and yet there's a protective order. What does the protective order do? She wasn't around them anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, there's what's called public property. You know, you can go on YouTube right now and you watch a lot of videos where people are on public property filming Whatever, a building, a, a job site, a yeah. home. Now, some people say, is it is it really right? Kind of creepy? Maybe it is kind of creepy, okay? I'm not saying it's not. I'm not disagreeing. But the reality is, it's not illegal. If you're standing on a sidewalk in a public town, and I mean, in a, on public property on a sidewalk, and you can video something that's behind fences, it can be seen from there, you're protected. Now, why would you do it? And maybe it's a little crazy to do it. I'm just saying that's what can happen. So when you drive through a neighborhood, someone drives through my neighborhood. I drive through someone else's neighborhood. Slow, fast. We don't want to go fast. So don't go fast. We got kids playing. But you slowly go through a neighborhood. What is that? That's driving through a public road, a public neighborhood. Okay. Now you pull into someone's driveway, you get out into their yard and you start calling. That's different. But none of that's been done. Why would it be done? Right? Why would it be done? But the biggest thing I want to talk about here was freedom of speech, ladies and gentlemen. Being able to state someone's opinion. Just about every video I've ever watched on YouTube, especially when you talk about true crime, is about your opinion of something. I believe she unalived him, or I believe he did this to her, or I believe that these are the things. You know, nothing we speak, sometimes we speak and it sounds like fact, but it's not fact. If you look at my last video when I was in the Horn Lake area, I made a point to say, all of this is alleged. We are searching for Sebastian. If we knew the facts of what happened that night, if we knew where he was, well, then we would be bringing this to closure for Seth Rogers, who I believe is just in, you know, as he stated one time, one long continuous day. Yeah. So Groundhog died. Groundhog died for him. We have to be vigilant in our freedom of speech. We all have a voice, whether you have a channel, whether you not. Not that's not to be YouTube. It could be TikTok. It could be Facebook. It could be Twitter, Instagram, social media as a whole. For you to be able to state your opinion, that's your freedom of speech. And I want to highlight this right here really good. Okay, this video itself, I'm going to get some comment that's going to say you're this or you're that or you don't know what you're. Okay. Do I like those comments? No, I don't. But there's a couple of things. Well, number one, everyone has a right to their opinion. So I'm not. Just like to credit this to Silver's on the scene, these link to the full video will be in the description. Sorry, I didn't change the credit. It's silver's on the screen.
I'm not going to delete that comment. I've I had see. people come to me and say, hey, can you delete this person's comments? He's rude. He's this. I said, I understand he's rude. Don't engage with him. Just don't engage. That's the second part. I may not like the comment, and I'm a human being, and it may rub me the wrong way, but you will not see me lash out. You will not see me fight back, if you will, because everyone has their right to their opinion. I'm going to give you a story real quick of a movie I watched. It's Nicolas Cage movie, and he was playing twins, and they were yeah. in a moment where they thought they were going to die. Somebody was chasing them. They were hiding out, and the one twin was kind of an outgoing where the other twin wasn't as outgoing. And the one that was more introverted looks at the one that was outgoing and says, man, I want to tell you, I've respected you. I've looked up to you my whole life. Remember when we were on the playground in, in middle school and we were like 10 years old and or 12 years old and you went over and you kissed Becky or whoever. Right? And uh, did you know what happened when you walked away? All those kids were laughing at you. They were making fun of you. And she was too. Why did you do that? And the response was this, because I liked her. I wanted her to know I liked her. I know they were laughing. I know they were making fun but I was doing what I believe was right for me. She'll ne she never went out with me. She made fun of me. And so, the, but they have a right to, that was the point. They have a right to, okay. People have a right to their opinion. And that's why this court ruling is so important. We can't allow freedom of speech to be taken. And anyone on YouTube, corporate YouTube needs to be watching this because YouTube has somewhere around 64 million creators, and 114 million, I believe it is, accounts. I don't know how they differentiate between accounts and creators. You know, if you have an account, you're a creator, in my opinion. But over 100 million, we can't let our freedom of speech go. So you got to help and stand up for that, okay? Everyone has a right. And here's the other thing, too. For those people who are saying, she shouldn't be saying this, she shouldn't be saying that, well, maybe you shouldn't be saying some of the things in the comments. What's different between taking her video and saying negative things in your video about her than her just saying what she's saying in her videos. Exactly. That's true. We gotta really watch out for one another. I will end the courtroom with this. Let's all help one another. Another movie. Aunt May's Grave. It says, when you help one, you help all. On the headstone. When you help one, you help all. So help one today. Help one tomorrow. Let's all work together. Because what are we doing? We're trying to find Sebastian Rogers. And we're only going to find him through searching and working together. So I'll end the court ruling with this. Freedom of speech, we all have it. Don't let it be taken away. State that your videos are not fact. State that this is your opinion. State entertainment purposes only. State do your own research. All these things people say because I don't want anybody coming after me. I have a right for my opinion, right? And they have a right to theirs. So if they want to rebuttal me in their own video or put in the comment that I'm wrong, according to them, they have their right. And I will never remove any of those. So I love the positive ones. Thank you for those. The negative ones, I don't engage in drama. Let there be no distraction in finding Sebastian. Okay? All right. So let's jump on now. New theory. Okay, so we've had the search. We, we... Right. So... That is what he had to say, which I found rather interesting, the fact that Chris never even spoke about his wife or stepson three years ago, right, and how they all say how he is on the video is how he is in life is a nasty arrogant narcissistic piece of ish as i say nowadays ish right so let me have a look now now he mentioned the light video right uh, I find it See the light coming here? 
Mexico. No, I don't know about you, but you know when you look at subject two, do you see like two figures moving? Let's just go back a little bit, right? What's subject two? Tell me if you see two figures in that. Right, I could swear I see two figures, like two people wa walking. Let's look at it again. We begin with a surprising development in the... Then again, it looks like two people there as well. You know what I mean? Possibly could be two people standing there. We don't know. Then that one goes behind that house. And number uh, subject two should come into play soon. Here it is. Because it hid in the ditch, in the trees, it had to get out of the ditch. It definitely looks like two people walking there. And that one disappears beyond the house. I don't know if it's, you know, it doesn't show you where that one then goes back to the house. Right? And I just wanted to show that because when that first come out, right, and you've seen, hold on, I'll show you the one that first came out. All right, all right, this one. There. All right, I'm just going to... We begin with a... And take it up to end. Right. The video you're about to see is from early Monday morning, February 26th, around 3.10 a.m. Now, there are no street lights in the Stafford Court neighborhood, so it is at night pitch black. What you will see here are these two points of light believed to be people with flashlights in the area around Sebastian Rogers' Hendersonville home. It is believed Sebastian left his home barefoot and with a flashlight sometime overnight. Since his disappearance, authorities have reviewed security video from homes in the neighborhood looking for clues. We've had several clips that have come in. And this one is getting the most attention, showing signs of activity around Sebastian's home the night he disappeared. You see, two light sources, which we've circled to help you follow. For point of reference, the security camera was pointed toward the back of Sebastian's home in a common area. In the video, you see subject one with a light source in the lower right-hand corner. Then you see subject two briefly appear here and move toward the first before that light source is covered or obscured by bushes. Subject one, a few seconds later, then moves out of frame. Then subject two reappears and follows subject one off screen. It's a short time later and it's very vague, but then you see one of the subjects moving quickly back through the common area and that is it. I know there's not much to see here. You certainly cannot identify anyone, but those close to... All right, now I'm going to by bushes. Back. Subject one, a few seconds later, then moves out of frame. Then subject two reappears 
and follows subject one off screen. It's a short time later and it's very vague, but then you see one of the subjects moving quickly back through the common area and that is it. I know, there's not much to see here. You certainly cannot identify anyone. Right, but when that video first came out, there was a light just there on that very first video. And I kept thinking, what is that light? What is that source there? And then it turns out to be a car. A car. Now, this is in an area of a common area. By the head, between the two houses. And it's the same direction that one, at least one, maybe two of the dogs picked up on. The same direction. Right? I don't think they came out the front door. I think they came out the back door. Right? And come through the garden and out that way. Because if they come through the front door, I wouldn't be too happy about having a neighbour across the road which cam whose camera would pick up my comings and going. I wouldn't. I think they've got their their settings too high. Right? And I, I wouldn't rely on them. And I think it's disgusting that they rely on their neighbours for their security. Uh, by your own security, mate. Right, so... You got that. So they didn't come out the front way. Now, if that is anyone with Sebastian, or Sebastian, he came out the back way. Now, what's saying he didn't climb out of that back bedroom window? If he didn't want to come out the back door, he could have climbed out the back bedroom window. We don't know, because as far as we know, he went to bed at 9pm, his mum went to bed at 12pm, had a chat to Chris between 9.30 and 12, went to bed at 12, put the dogs in the crate, went to bed, didn't wake up till 6am, and Sebastian was gone. Right? I think, I t think something happened during the night. I really do. That thought could be something to do with it or nothing. It may be nothing. It may just be her making it up to make it sound more convincing. But all she's done is dig the hole bigger because people are then saying, oh, damn. You heard your son in the bedroom and you didn't go and check on him. You just shouted through to him. Whatever you're doing, you better get to sleep. And then you hear a thud. Then a couple of interviews later, you put in, oh, I heard your thud. But you still didn't go and check on him. Hmm. Some people have said, they wouldn't check on their 15-year-old son if they heard your thud. Yes, I fucking well would. What the hell are you doing in here? You know what I mean? What's all this noise you're making? Get to sleep. Or settle down. You know what I mean? Read a book. Watch TV if you need to, but just settle down. Alright? And so, yeah, I would be in my son's 15-year-old bedroom. What the hell is going on? Now, this is a lad who's on the spectrum, he's autistic, he's high-functioning, so he can function, he can wash, dress, eat himself, he can do all those things himself, he's high-functioning, right? He just needs that extra more support with uh, working, working with him to... Get help him understand like social socializing, distancing, keeping your distance from people and things like that, right? So that's what his problem 
Exactly. This isn't Sebastian. Well, when I talk about Sebastian possibly arranging with someone to meet up with him to go to get away from his home, that was just hypothetically, right? I've just thrown different scenarios out there. But no one there was a car in that area. No one there was lights in that area. And it wasn't a fucking trash truck. Right? I was so hoping Seth would have said when Josh mentioned that, no, it isn't a trash truck. I was so hoping he'd say that because he came out and said it was a trash truck because... I don't think when he was shown that video, right? I don't think he was shown that video. I think he was shown the video of a trash truck coming around in the morning. That's the video I think they showed them. They didn't show what happened an hour or so before the trash truck got there. They showed them. That part of the video where the trash truck came round. And yeah, so this isn't Sebastian going out on his own. Because as you pointed out, I can see, yeah, I can see figures. It's like two people. I'm going, am I going blind? Am I, I know I'm, I wear glasses, but come on. I can definitely see two figures moving. And the same with the first subject one. There's like two figures moving there. Two separate incidents. What do you mean by that, Karen? Right. So I think something happened earlier on in the evening. Perhaps she did give him too much of his medication and he fell out of the bed bumped his head, bump. we know he had that fluid thing on the brain. The medication hadn't kicked in properly, so she gave him some more and bump. Or she's gone in. This is just hypothetically, it's just my opinion, my views, my opinion, whatever. Right? Or she did go into him. She's had an argument with him. Knocked him, or he's gone off. Like, you remember that time his dad said about when he was going to go swimming? And he asked him to just to clean his room up. And his dad went in, and he hadn't cleaned his room up. Yeah? When he was a little boy. And uh, Sebastian ran at him. And as he rang at him, he fell over something. So Seth put his hand out to stop his head hitting the door. Remember? I think something like that has happened and he's hit his head. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's two incidents. There's a light, light at light, like, whatever time, and then there's a the trash truck, and I believe they showed him the trash truck part, not the bit before. I believe they didn't want that out there. That was their 
bit of nugget, that, that then nugget. But I'm sorry, it got out there and you can't fob YouTubers off because they will dig and dig and dig. They will literally dissect a video to little pieces. Right? But like I said, it wasn't Sebastian going off on his own. Someone took him there because we see that light moving really quickly. That's why I think perhaps coming over, she was either walk well, to get Sebastian sent over that way, for a dog, one of the dogs to actually pick up that scent, he had to be walking. Yeah? So I think she was walking Sebastian over, hypothetically, Right, and she's gone down that ditch, and that's where you lose that light. And then they've had to climb up the ditch again, because it can be quite deep, apparently. And then they've had to climb up out of that ditch again, and that's when we see the light again. But going back, she's on her own. She's on her own, so she's able to move quicker. She didn't have to go down the ditch. She could jump straight across, across that ditch. I know I would. I wouldn't be climbing down a dip into a ditch again to climb up. I'd be doing my best to jump it. I know I'm 57. But I'd do my best to jump it. Right? So, yeah, that was definitely someone walking Sebastian over. So if that's the case, if they was walking Sebastian over, then it couldn't have been Joe's job. He couldn't have been dosed up on medication. Right? Because if he was, they'd be carrying him. But perhaps they was carrying him, and that's why it took him so long, much longer. But then again, his scent wouldn't be there, would he? If a dog picked up on his scent, and that dog followed that scent right to the same direction that they took. But did the dog pick up on Sebastian's scent? Because we know dogs do can get distracted and can pick up up on another scent. Did they pick up on someone else's scent? That leg from the house over there. Because even Chris said you can't rely on these dogs. They're not hundred percent accurate. So, did they pick on, up on Sebastian's scent? Or did they pick up on another scent? And as for his scent being over by, on that construction site, I think Sebastian's been over there many times before on his own. And we're going to hear that in a minute. When I play this audio. Right? And, why have I got it on at the moment? I'm playing at the moment. Uh, yeah, this is what I'm playing at the moment, right? We're going to hear how their neighbour mentioned seeing Sebastian before in that area walking around, but just had not seen him on that Monday morning. Had not seen him. But they had seen him before in the area. And yet Chris said, Sebastian's never been over there on his own. He's been over there in a car. So now, who's lying? The neighbour who stayed says they saw him, but not Monday. They have seen him before, but just not that Monday. Or Chris. Hmm. Let me think. That's a hard question. Who do I believe? Uh, the neighbour. So anyway, we're going to listen to this, and then that would be the last picture we're watching tonight. Anyway, what's going on? Let's go on back to that resident. I'm going to go from there. I'm in the area. Check one hold up. You can see me. You can take the ESS route and route to the Midland J-Mile. I said, there's no medical center ER, center station ER, it's under regional ER, and it's all clear of the juvenile. You can see that the code red has them on, that is in 45. The next picture I back up, going into the construction site over here, back towards the beach. That's awful muddy. Do you see any footprints or anything? You didn't have any shoes? No, I did. I do have some footprints. Right there where you're standing? Yeah. 
leaving right over here to the retain. No shoes, just for rest. He literally dug into it. Next way, he's straight to the retain. Behind the door, he dug into the water. Got to eat any. around it. There was a few uh, footprints in some of the softer dirt uh, headed straight this way on the track that he was running. Do we have a picture yet? That's a cool. What was that he's doing? That why would there be footprints going to that retention pond? Footprints without shoes. That doesn't make sense to me. Because you can tell a footprint whether it's got shoes on or shoes, because the shoes would be the imprint of the soul. Now, I'm wondering, did they get any casts? Did they get the crime scene people over there taking a cast of those footprints? Did they? Hmm. It makes me wrong. I'm going to slow it down a little bit more because it is really still quite free. Did they get any casts of those footprints? Because that's possible evidence. If he was to, if he was run that way, if he ran that way, you know what I mean. But I don't think it is his. That could be anyone's footprints. That is. Well, where the trees are, 25 feet, maybe out in the middle. Hey, guys. The construction zone, there's another pond. There's somebody standing in the woods. It's a, it looks like a person. It is a person we know, but there's another pond. He's standing back there by himself. Past the construction zone in the same area back there. Uh, yeah, the, the north end of it, yeah. You know, the here, it was straight back. There's an... There's a person in the woods uh, by that pond. There's the house on the other side of the tree line. Going back toward the beach or going on the back side. Yeah, on the back side, and he's not moving. He's just standing there by himself in the woods. It's Hendersonville 517. I'm on the northeast corner in the cemetery across the tree line. Am I close? No, the back side. Exactly. We've never heard if they made a cast of those footprints. So, why not? They're looking for a child, right? Any trace of a child, barefoot. And they come across some footprints going to the retention pond. And they don't get a cast made of those footprints. Why not? They emptied the pond, the retention pond, found nothing. But if, if they are going on the fact that he ran up to, he ran or went up to the construction site after leaving the house, yeah, discounting those lights and discounting the car, he left that house. He went up to the construction site and went up to the retention pond. Where did he go from there? Hmm? Where? That's why I don't... That's why I think those footprints... It's possible they are bluffing on dispatch to not tip off anyone. Possibly. But then again, don't forget... They're looking for a runaway, a missing child. They're not looking for, oh, look, we can't say this. We need to be careful what we say because we could uh, tip people off. You know what I mean? They don't know. It. They're not looking at it as a kidnapping or anything like that. They're looking at it as a, a runaway, a missing child. So...
But I've just thought about that, about why I want you to make a cast. The amount of times I've listened to this, the amount of times I've heard people talk about it, I've never, it just come to me to know, I want you to never make a cast of those sort of things. Vicky, if you can, do you have anybody there with you? Sam, uh, let me see if I can find one on my map. I got my drone down for the moment, and I'll see if I can do it. Burger over it. One of the two. I'm in my truck. Two, there's four of us on foot coming across the yard, start directing. Nineteen guns, I mean. Straight in, straight in. Keep it on. Go left, go left. Did you come back, you passed it. There's no other street right here. There won't be, there's one. Block where you going? One. End of the woods, it's woods. You should be about 15 foot from it. What's the channel's first name? Should be all over it, whatever it is right there. The two people walking the wood. It's a mannequin. Sorry, guys. Look just like a person from the air. Here's another 66. What's the name of the child that we're looking for? First name is Pat. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? First name is Pat. Sorry. Last clothing description was black sweatpants with a white stripe. Black long sleeve t shirt with a friend. Mickey, how many drones do y'all have up? One at the moment. I've got mine ground so I can get Sark up. I'll be back in the air momentarily. 29 essential on scene. Put two out here with me. And for has anybody been there since the initial? There's a whole bunch of people here now. Four in the home. Can you help me listen to the radio on the north end until we wrap this up, please? Yes, sir. Brandon, you've got uh, Hendersonville Mountain Patrol coming up there, and Joe's sending some more cars. If I want, if we can start from the beginning, from the original house, and set up a new plan up there. Yeah, boy, that's what we're doing now, sir. Thank you. One all year, so neighbor advised that he's found the child under his child, under his son's car, which is across the street, two doors up. So be sure and search under cars and under things. Who do you want to go with this other canine search and rescue? I just talked to the GPC, the construction back here. He's going to start. We'll give the word out to all his crews that are out here working. Everybody, we can get a game plan and reconvene. Oh, Burgett, can you put a drum? I knew they said that. That the construction site manager is going to let the his workers know and to keep an eye out. Uh, excuse me. What? What? Should you not be searching all those empty properties yourself? You know what I mean. Should they not have gone through every empty property themselves? and walked around all those properties they were building, all the empty ones. They did it with all the other houses that was t filled up who had families in them. So why would they not search the empty ones? Why was it left down to the manager of the construction site to inform his workers so they could keep an eye out? Run right over top of this trash can, this dumpster. See if there's anything in it. 188. Van 184 is going to send you a picture. You send a uh, code red for 1008 Stafford. Code red was the now at 0745 this morning. 24. Um, we will send that in good. Can we retry that, please? Yeah, I love it. 12188. Go ahead, sir. Can you come to 1008, please? Well, to any units that are going to be assisting with 1008, please come to 1008 Stafford Court now, please. Start at the beginning of Kelly Lane 1000. We're going to work our way north of Kelly Lane. That's fine. I'll get these two houses right here, and we'll take the right side. The white Ford truck, that's the Hendersonville officer's house that's with me. So there's a Hengersonville police officer who lives in one of them houses. Hi. No, that house hasn't been checked. The next house up from is a single white four in the driveway. We will get a 
neighborhood Facebook page. Post was made 1023 to uh, no emotion on camera. Yeah, I've never had an additional caller call in that was in the head. Dating she saw someone that made the description on Hogan's branch, you know, with any blonde hair, with a bag wrapped around his head. She also stated she had on a reflective jacket approximately two hours ago. 30 for my 139 World End has a camera, but nobody's answering the door. He had some ties at White House High School, and every time he got in trouble, he wanted to go back to White House, so my notify White House PD, we're notifying this so. early. This way, that was the camera, is correct? It's difficult. Nobody's answering, nobody's home. In reference to that address, uh, please run a registration check on testing tab. Expect Jay 2012 BMW, seven digit black and color. Says all right, address. Confirm NSR. Correct. Right. You can't see it. You can find any information. Make sure we can look up on the phone number or something. We would appreciate it. Command the unit center at staff report. When you check a residence. Please give me the numeric and unit numbers that have checked it and whether or not you made contact with anybody. Made contact with 1000 Kellen Lane. Uh, he checked all the cameras. Nothing was on. Uh, no answer at 102 or 103 Kellen Lane. One of the answers hasn't seen it. Uh, nothing on the ring door. You're saying 102 is it 1002? 1,002. I'm sorry. Did you ask if he had any light purple hoodie? I don't know if the parents were there, but uh, just find out if he owns a light purple hoodie with him or something like that. Mom doesn't have a visor. She called me. Yeah. Um, they were asked. I didn't know that. Doesn't he have a, an aunt or someone who lives up that way as well? Doesn't, hasn't Chris got a sister who lives up that way? I'm sure he has a sister that lives up that way as well. Hmm. I might one day, my, can't do it tomorrow because I've got to go out it's my grandson's birthday, so they're having a little, a little family get together. And then on Friday they're going out and meeting up with some of his friends. They're going to the gear gear park over in Fife. So I'll be on tomorrow night, but I can't do any research on this till I get home. Dragon Square last night. Um, just bowling at them. Do you have a unit go there? I'm not sure that he hasn't returned there. Uh, 1015, have ring cameras, but didn't pick up anything. 517, Hendersonville, excuse me. 1000, contact, and say anything either, nothing on ring doorbell. 1012, Kellen Lane through 20. 1012, go through the entire. The uh, lady at 1032, Kellen, uh, runs the neighborhood Facebook page and she's updating it to request people to look in their crawl spaces and hidden areas. Four. Hey, on, uh, at one time, I've been telling Randy, do y'all happen to check the crawl space? I will have to check my list, but if it wasn't locked from the outside, it was checked. 1018 Stafford. They are reviewing their camera footage right now. I need to check my thing and they cameras check. No, that's not. 184, you're low volume. I got, I got cameras checked. It will work out in 18. <laughs> well, I'll be out at uh, St. John Mich Missionary, 1085. Uh, resident at 1028, Kellen Lane, states that he just saw a kid with a black shirt, black shorts, black shorts. had a phone in his hand coming across the construction. Uh, when he 
made uh, contact with this gentleman. The subject went straight back to the woods at the top of Killing Lane. I just talked to him. He's one heavy. Four, thank you. Twelve all units, when you're done with your assignment, please come back to 1008 Stafford. 1023, 24, 18, and 16 Stafford. Over in cameras, nothing's been called. Operations have started at Little Den Drive. I think John Baptist is clear all the way along. One of the uh, doctors and both police buses have been cleared also. Do you make a move? Clear for Are you going back to Stafford? Cool. Uh, still on search, but you know, area. 1026, Killing Way, no contact. 1028, made contact, nothing on their cameras. And 1030, Contact, nothing on their cameras, and nothing in the tree house behind the house. 24. 66, man. All houses on Kevin Lane have been checked. And Brad, those woods on that side of uh, Long Hollow, we've been unable to fly to due to the distance with the drones. So those big woods that south of uh, the house, we have been able to shut off all properties on Sandy Wood Court have been checked. We're starting on Honey Slip on now. Yeah, that's 3293. Long Hollow Pike, uh, beyond the creek, and checking that cave behind the house. I'm almost back to the house, meeting my partner. I crawled back into the cave uh, as far as I could go before it got muddy. No footprints, and it's collapsed on in about 10 feet. So that was one of the caves. They got about 10 feet in, and then it collapsed. But there's no footprints. Okay. Fair enough, because I'm sure, as he just, you heard him say, he got 10 foot in before getting really muddy and it collapsed deep. But there was no footprints. Now, if he'd gone into that cave, there would be some sign that he'd gone in there, either through his footprints or through hands or his knees or something. What's your out of it, correct? Sounds <laughs> uh, like Trooper Grinder has himself and a few troopers. They're going to hit the road outside of our immediate vicinity and just uh, look for him walking down the roadway somewhere. 3301 Long Hollow Pike has been cleared. Stone House, several outbuildings uh, have been cleared. They're unlocked if anyone else wants to look. I just sent you the endangered poster. If you can put that on our social media, please. 12 to 188. Please. Did y'all check inside each one of those buses behind T.W. Hunter? It just doesn't get kind of like that. Right 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 right. Hey, well, we're we'll about to three closest there. to the building. Will you ask Transville to respond to the area of National Pike and Carrying Road? There's a juvenile in that area wearing black pants and a red t shirt. I was shaking back and forth like he had autism. It was just reported to us. Outside of Long Hollow from Killing Lane to Center Point has been checked. Uh, can you check the field houses that are up on top of the hill by the practice field back behind TW Hunter? I don't see that anybody has, has tracked through there on foot. Okay, Paul. The barn and I saw. 20 locations clear. Residents in Warren at 3221 Long Hollow Pike is clear. Oh, and from my starting location to Shackle Island, I've walked the entire creek bed and it appears clear. Myself and 182 have been behind TW Hunter, all the way behind Beach. Uh, football field and baseball field up in the fields, checking through lines all the way to the cemetery behind Beach. No presbytery. We're still here so far, cut up. It's clear. You know, something 182. We've not made ourselves around to the front of the schools to the side of the school check. We're still in the back. Yeah. Very well, we get on Long Hollow Pike. Three is. Go ahead, three. The bus and the shed have been checked at 3220. Yeah, well, thank you. That is possible. And your partner. First stop at Willow Bend and go house to house at uh, Willow Bend. Check all those, please. The other week, I was watching a uh, YouTube. Uh, what was his name now? Oh, God. 
you know the guy who was the guy back who, who did the diving and was going all the water and the ponds? Try, or what was his name? The YouTube channel, I can't think. Not divers, right? Not divers. Him and uh, another YouTuber was up on that construction site. Now, bear in mind when they went, there's more houses there being built up now. And they seen this car, and they, this car seemed to be following them. So they thought. So they split up, and they both went one, 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 one went one way, and one went together, and would meet up at the top. But he was saying the drain holes, you know, the gr grates. When he was there before, some of these drains, grates, weren't in place. Was not in place, and that big things, right? He said, if he, if he was walking through here that night, he wouldn't know. He, he could have fell down one of them drains. And he said, I, I'm glad I've got this map up on the screen, right? Because the, the one is round about here, the one retention pond is round about here. And over here, just round about here, was a manhole cover for the drain. And he went in to check the drain, but he couldn't get in because it's just full of mud. Right? And when he went back with his other crew member, with his other sidekick, I can't think of his name, CJ, some of whatever, he's got his own YouTube channel. That manhole cover here, down back here somewhere, was covered over with dirt. Yet we don't know if that was cleared, if anyone had cleared that manhole, that drain pipe, you know what I mean? And he said all these drains that are on the side of the road along here and whatever, they didn't have covers on when he first came. You know, he could have fouled down any of them, if that is the case. If he was over that way, he could have fouled down any of them. But then I thought, yeah, but I know he could have fouled down them. Right? But he could have got injured. But I'm sure while they was over there with their dogs, searching that area at whatever time, 7 or 8 in the morning, he could have heard something, he could have called out, he could have cried out. You know what I mean? Unless he was injured to the point where he was knocked out. He's unconscious. Possibilities. There's lots of possibilities in this case. But I don't think he's anywhere around here. I really don't. People, people are driven through. It doesn't look like anybody's a house now. Yeah, but every house on Honeysuckle has been checked. People that answered the door have only seen the parish man this morning, if nothing else. The White House and Red Barn adjacent to DW owner 2105 New Hope. Clear. 3417 THP has joined in with myself and 517 on World Band to check houses. That's right. The big holding pond has been cleared by Hendersonville Fire. They're going to rehab at Shackle Island for a bit, then I go to the one over by the cemetery. <laughs> field houses behind the beach, soccer field. It's been uh, searched. We're going to head over to the side field house across the street from the fire hall. 106, 108, 110, 112, Willowbrook, all check no contact with any homeowners. And none of these houses have car crawl spaces. Beach football complex. Are you all still searching that area? Yes, sir. Take contact with a realtor at 114. Hasn't seen him, and all the rooms have been cleared. 116, 
made contact with that homeowner. He said he has seen that child walking in the neighborhood in past times, but not recently. The main show house next to the first. He said he had seen him. All right, let's just go back. Uh, a little bit further. Right, he had seen him. Just not like that. One fourteen hasn't seen him, and all the rooms have been cleared. One sixteen made contact with that homeowner. He said he has seen that child walking in the neighborhood in past times, but not recently. But not recently. So, uh, like I said before, who do you believe? Do you believe Chris when he says, I know it was on a YouTube channel, I can't remember which one, I'll try and find it and I'll do a live on that. Right? Uh, where he said, Sebastian had never been to that site on his own. He'd been there in a car, they drove up there and around there in a the car, but he'd never been up there walking. Yet we've got a neighbour who lives in that on that road of that construction site who said he has seen him in the past just not that day so who do you believe i know who i believe the main hill house next to the first man next has been completely searched all clear it's got a beach softball beach football it's the one next to the um beach coming church between it and the first man next is the main football complex. We are uh, me and Marshall's back here in the back of the cemetery back here. No contact with anyone in his truck is not here either. So I think the lady's here trying to get in her driveway in your cars and um you know, is the key there by chance. It is but it's locked. Okay. So she's trying to get in her driveway. Hello. We have a process. Call came in at 6.33 this morning. Boom. 6.33. That call came in. Um, what time did Chris say he phoned them? Oh, yeah. 6.20. So why was it 6.20? That's 30.20. 13. So that's an extra 13 minutes difference to what Chris states. And someone got a photo. I did have it and I'd have to search for all my photos again. And it took a photo of uh, Sumner County Sheriff's Office opening and closing times. And it said the opening times, I believe it stated, was 8 a.m. Right? So if you phoned the sheriff's office up direct, you would then get redirected to the dispatcher, who would then dispatch whoever. But that isn't going to take. 13 minutes to make that phone call. So, why did he say he phoned at 6.20? Even 6.20 is a long time when you think she went in to get Sebastian up at 6 a.m. Sebastian wasn't there. She's had a quick run around of the house looking for him. She says herself it only took a, a minute or so. By then she's on the phone to Chris. So say five past six, she's on the phone to Chris. And yet he, didn't, he then said he phoned the police at 6.20. So there's Ken. There's 15. Fifteen minutes there. That was on the phone before. So I changed fifteen minutes before he even phoned the police. In his words, but the police 
It says the call came through at 6.33. Yeah, but what about... I thought that, Karen, I honestly thought that. But it's those lights in that common area. We can't say it was at 3 o'clock because... The woman at 1001, 1001, said her timer had stopped at 10 past 3. But the timer had stopped on Friday at 10 past 3. Sebastian didn't go missing till Sunday night, early hours Monday morning. So... We don't know what time those lights were. But from what she was saying, she was working it way back. When she was watching the video, she could see the school bus come, so she knew what time it was around then. She could see when the trash truck came, so she knew what time the trash truck came. So she had a, 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 sort of a good idea of what time those lights were about. And she reckoned, that woman reckoned, that between 3 3.30. Right. But she couldn't be definite what time it was because the clock had stopped. And that's why they would not be able to use that as evidence. Because if they took that into a court, say it did go to a trial, say they found someone and arrested someone, right? And they went to court, they showed that video, yeah? Not this video we're seeing, the actual uh, home security video, that video. They showed that video, they'd say, but that st clock stopped on Friday. So how do we know this is from Friday night? Uh, how do you know that is from Sunday night? That could be from Friday night. But then again, their argument could be, but trash trucks don't come through on a Saturday morning. You don't get school buses coming through on a Saturday morning. Right, so perhaps I could use that. Hmm, they probably could. But it's... I just think that difference... Like, the time it took him from her phoning him to him phoning the police was a good 15 minutes. He said he phoned at 20 past 6. She said she woke up, at, she went to wake him up at six, he wasn't there, she rang around the house a minute or two, then phoned Chris. She was then, while he talked to Chris, she did another search of the house, talked to Chris, could you be here, could you be there, so she's running around. It's not a bigger house. Yeah. It was something old, definitely. Why? Uh. So say another five minutes, talk to him on the phone while running around, checking these spots that he's saying, have you checked beyond bed, have you checked here? So she's running around now, so another five minutes doing that. So say ten past six. It's still another ten minutes before he actually stated he phoned the police. All right? Because he said he phoned around about 20 past 6. We now know, we know from the dispatch call, which we know he wasn't happy about being released. We know he wasn't happy. You could tell it in his voice. He was not happy that was released. Right? We know now from the dispatch call, the call came through at 6.33. That's... If he said he phoned at 20 past 6, that's another 13 minutes later. It does not take 13 minutes to get through to, to dispatch. 
อันว่าจิตใจใครรอ10 minutes after searching the house a second time to phone the police anyway why if I went into my son's room or my child's room and I was not there how would I be phoning my husband because he's at work he can't help how I'd be on the phone to the police I don't care if I could get my words out or not she was able to get the words out to tell Chris he wasn't there So why couldn't she phone the police and say, get the words out to say, my son is missing? You know what I mean? Why couldn't she phone the police? She managed to phone Chris. But she couldn't, she couldn't manage to make that phone call for her son who was missing. It's all these little things, just very little things. That make me so suspicious about them. And this timing, there's something wrong with this timing, with waking it, going and checking on him at six, and then, and she doesn't stay. Like, I just, you know, if that had been me giving the interview, I just said, well, I ran around the house, totally took me a minute or so, then I phoned my husband, then I'm running around the house again, checking again, still not there. I then gone in and got changed, got dressed, just threw some clothes on, jumped in my car and started driving around. You don't met, hear that. You only hear her say she jumped in her car because someone said, oh, so you phoned the police at 20 past six. Um, when was you phoned to her? I was still talking to Chris when he phoned the police. She doesn't say anything about her getting dressed. She had 20 minutes. Or 10 minutes to go and get dressed. Throw some joggers on. A flipping onesie if you've got one. Throw a onesie on. Anything. But she didn't say anything like that. So was she dressed before she went and woke Sebastian up? So did she wake up about half five, go and get a shower and get dressed, and then go and wake Sebastian up? Possible. But she didn't say any of that. She just said she got up at six o'clock and went and woke, woke Sebastian up and he was gone. She didn't say nothing about getting up at half five, having a shower and getting dressed herself before waking Sebastian up. Because there's no mention of her getting dressed. But she was dressed when the police got there. I should imagine she was dressed when Seth got there at quarter past eight. But there's no mention of her getting dressed from when she got up to wake Sebastian up. She said she jumped in the car, she was in the car driving around as Chris made that three way phone call. It's three meditated, I believe, last day of fun, yes. Katie made spaghetti pancakes, yes. Went shopping with family, and then bowling, and then out to dinner. Chris had four, hold on, hold on, I heard him about this early, what's this about, Chris had four days off? I've not heard that before, I only heard about that sometime today. And I thought, no, no, no. How come I'm only hearing about that now? Right? When apparently he was at work. Oh, I'm going to have to find this. I'm going to have to watch these videos then. I haven't watched these videos lately. As I said, I've not been on YouTube for first time was yesterday in nearly a week. So I'm going to have to watch these videos. So Chris had four days off. That's interesting. That is very, so, if he had four days off, did he have the four days off before he went missing? I will, I'll go back and listen to that. I only played a short clip of what he was saying. 
right? But I will go and listen to that one, Karen. Thank you. So, let's finish this off and then we can call it quits. Pulling out. <laughs> right, thank you. Anyway, we're just putting another the can on the ground at the house. See if it picks up anything. We are breaking off the other gallon of fuel. Hello, fuel. The creek worsens to New Jack and Long Hollow in the bridge there, Fulton Check. Uh huh. Where are you with your location? I'm looking by World 9. Ten Thorntons right now. I just got a phone call. Kid matching the description, hiding under the bridge, lower station camp behind the market. I'll be en route. I'm close. Right now, there's round by that marketplace, that shop. Why did no one go and ask them for their video footage? Then, why did not one officer go and ask to view their video footage then? If there's a possible sighting of a child on the bridge by there, fitting his description, would they not think after going investigating that and finding it wasn't him, thinking, hold on, let's just see if they've got anything on their video footage. They've been checking all the houses, so why not the marketplace? They only went to the marketplace two weeks later. And by then, it had, like, filmed over. Somebody else on the other side of uh, the nursery to come down. Uh, she stated that he could be on that side. 446, what was he like, you know? Just under the bridge. Uh, she stated that when she went down to turn around, he was gone. 446, did you talk to the client? She's still by the bridge. A uh, white female. So he had four guys off. The Thursday till the Sunday. And yet he didn't come home. I think he was home. I really do. I think he was home that weekend. Or... Because we don't... We don't even see, you know, if he was at... No, he wasn't at the Texas Road guys because I'd just seen him on the video coming out when he left and all that lot. But perhaps he was at the house on Sunday, you know, when they come home and Sebastian lost it and said, he's not supposed to be here. You know what I mean? Perhaps something like that went off. He's not supposed to be here. Why is he here? But then again, would his car not be there? You know, they went two weeks later, carrying about that store. Two weeks after, not five days, two weeks later they went there. And it was being recorded over. Who played poker with his uncle? So, um, there's nothing new in that recording, I've just nearly finished, so I'm not going to carry on with it. But it was just certain points of that dispatch call that got me, like, that timing, I'm sorry, that phone call in the morning really, really bothers me. Really bothers me. Like... I don't think he phoned until about, if that call came through at 6.33, that's when he phoned. Because it would be logged in at 6.33. Right. 
right? So let's just say he said, right, I'm going to phone the police, and he phoned the sheriff's office at 6.30, and then got redirected through to dispatch because the um, sheriff's office is not open. Chris Katie and the guys, Katie and Sebastian were there. Terry Lynn. I'm, I'm so behind in this case, I really am. So he's playing poker, he played poker with his uncle. Hmm. Did you see the short uh, video Terry Lynn put out yesterday? I think not yesterday, the day of the court hearing. She was not happy about what happened. She was not happy. And there's a lot of YouTubers not happy with what has happened. Right? And I don't care because I live in the UK and if I don't like someone, I will say, I don't like you. Tough luck. If you don't like that, bye-bye. You know what I mean? You don't have to watch my... You saw it. She was not happy, was she? She... She said the judge... She felt like the judge had already made his mind up when he came in. Right, so... I feel sorry for BHB because she's doing only what we do, but she takes it that one... And too extreme. Right, she'll take it to extreme. Like on um, her thumbnails for some of the YouTube videos she's done. Which it's uh, supposed to be Katie and Chris and it's got blood all over them and all that lot. That's too far. In my opinion, you can... If it's my opinion, I can say, in my opinion, I believe this happened. This, this, or this happened. Right? And that's my opinion, and no one can take my opinion away from me. It's like saying, if someone tried to take my opinion away from me, I'm going to say, so, as long as I agree with what you say, it's okay. I can say it. But if I don't agree with what you're saying, then I can't have... I can't say nothing, so which means I have no opinion. And I don't believe in that. And I am welcome anyone to come in my chat and say anything they want. Right? If they want to say something, they don't, they don't agree with something I say. I, like, I had someone come in my chat, or oh, I think it was months and months ago when I first started talking about Sebastian. And they come in and they say something about Chris and Katie and all this stuff. And all I said was, what made you come to that conclusion? What makes you say that? You know what I mean? I'm interested to hear all sides. And the person never came, came back. Never came back. Right? I don't care if anyone wants to have a go at me. But like on one channel, I agree with her. You have a go at her, she don't care. But you have a go, you start having a go at people in the chat, then you will be kicked out. Because everyone's entitled to their opinion. Yes, I heard about the laughing in the court and everything. Oh yeah, I heard about all that. So, I do feel sorry, but I think she's got a... Pull it in a bit. Personally, if I was her, uh, I'd just say, you know what? Take this as a loss. Yeah? Pay my court fees, my whatever. Pay it all off. Get it all paid off. Take this as a loss. And when I dig alive, I'll talk about Sebastian, but I wouldn't talk about Chris or Katie. Right? I know you have to bring them into it somewhere. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't bring them into it at all. I'd focus on where possible places 
that it could be. You know what I mean? Just by using Google Earth. She doesn't even have to come down to Tennessee. She could do it by Google Earth. She, you know what I mean? She doesn't have to come back into Hendersonville. She'd be best to stay well away from Hendersonville. And I think that's why I think now any vigils, if she goes to a vigil, it will not be in Hendersonville. She cannot afford to be in Hendersonville. She can be, oh, she's following us. She's harassing us. You know what I mean? Has she got to walk around with a camera 24-7? Because that's just ridiculous thing. But I think she needs to rein it in a little bit. And just call this a loss. Let them have the win. Let them have it. Because no way would I go to jail for them. I've let them have this win. Because what, what's that sound like? You may have won the battle, but you haven't won the war. Or something like that. You know what I mean? Let them take this win. Let them take it because if it comes out that they did have anything to do with it, then everything I've said, she said, Silver said, all these other YouTubers have said, we will be proven correct. Let them take this as a win. Let them take it. But I think these other channels need to stop with the hate. They need to stop with all this BS. They really do. As I was taught, if you've got nothing else to say, then shut your mouth. Well, that's what I say. I was taught, if I've got nothing else to say, let's say nothing at all. I'll just say, shut your mouth. <laughs> Keep it zipped. Right, so, it's... They've got to stop this hate. This ch Like... And what was we, we was talking about something else? I was on another channel. Right. And um, Lady Kay, Lady Kay talks. I go on her channel. Some I don't agree with everything she says. She probably don't agree with everything I say. But there's some lies she does a lot and she's just refreshing, you know what I mean? She's just too so refreshing. Yeah, they are passionate about the First Amendment, but it was a circus. Yep. But I would just let them have this as a win, if I was betting. Let drop now. Okay, you win this case. The battle isn't over yet. Right? And I just would not mention their names. Full stop. You can talk about Sebastian without talking about either of those names, without talking about KPCP or all the bow socks. And you really can. I've done it. I've done lives before where I've talked about Sebastian and not mentioned Chris or Katie. I hardly ever mention the bow socks because I just don't like them. Something about them I do not like. I don't know what it is. I just don't like the bow socks. I just get that feeling with certain people. And like they are two of them. And Chris says some is the other one, the third one. I just don't like them. So I don't talk about them if I can help you. But you, somewhere along the line, you do need to talk about Chris and Katie because Katie was the last one. Yeah, she needs to drop that. She needs to stop doing that. Bullhorn Betty, please, if you ever get anyone tells you anything, please stop talking about the Georgian law enforcement because it's not going to help. It's not. 
line. She needs to stop that. As I said, let this go as a win. Let it just go. And do not mention their names again. And if anyone in their chat brings up their names and say, look, I don't want you even bringing the names up in chat. If you do, I'm going to put you on a suspension for so long. You know what I mean? We don't want their names mentioned in my lives or on my chat. Simple. Then they've got nothing to keep having a go at because she's talking about Sebastian and she's helping Seth, the father, find his son, Sebastian. Right? I'm sure there's plenty she could talk about. About how what Seth has been doing, how, what about any searches they are planning or vigils they are planning or anything like that. Just talk about him, about Sebastian and keep his name out there. If I just sat here and talked for a whole hour about Sebastian, right? About Seth and Sebastian, I, I could give that quite easily. Because I love to hear Seth talk about Sebastian. I really do. But it breaks my heart when I hear him getting upset. Breaks my heart when I hear Seth getting all choked up. Because that is his son. And he just wants his son home. Just like any parent would. Right? But she's got to talk, stop that talking about the children law enforcement. That is not the right way to go. That is going to end up, end up. She is going to end up in jail if she keeps doing that. It's like she's poking the bear constantly. Stop poking the bear. But, no, I just wanted to do this live tonight, just as an update. Just as a refresher, that's why I brought in the videos of the lights and this audio because she needs to leave Seth out of her fights with the law. Yes. Yes, she does as well, yes. She's got a fight with law enforcement, that's her fault. Don't bring Seth into it. But she needs to stop this fighting with the law enforcement. Okay. I don't like some of the county sheriff's office. Right? I really don't. I don't think... Yes, they did a full skirt search for the first week. You know what I mean? But then all of a sudden they just pulled away and backed off. And did nothing. And then because other groups and organisations were coming down one weekend, yeah? All of a sudden, they've arranged for a big scale search again. It's like, oh God, we've got all these, they've got all these YouTube organisations and whatever coming down to do searches with their boots and their dogs are out there. We're going to be made to look stupid. We need to get out there and get this sorted. So they've then arranged for a search to get put on. So every time you watch, every time, Seth arranges for a group to come in and do a search or another group of volunteers to come in with their dogs or their boats on a certain weekend, right, to do a search. You watch some of the county sheriff's office will set up their own search that weekend. Tennessee don't like outsiders. Well, it's a bit like up here. Uh, I was told Scotland, they don't like the English. Until I turned around and said, don't worry, I don't like the English myself. <laughs> Which majority of the English I do not like, and I'm English, and I don't like the majority of the English. <laughs> Especially from Birmingham. There's a only a handful of people I like from Birmingham. Right, so and it can't be like t broke the ice because someone asked me once, I said, how are you settling in up here? And I said, oh, I'm good, good. And 
I said, uh, like, I was a bit worried about people not liking me because of me being English. And someone said, well, I can be a bit like that because they don't like the English very much up in Scotland. So I just automatically turned around and said, don't worry, I don't like the English. Why do you think I moved up here? <laughs> but no, she, she's an outsider and they don't take to outsiders coming in and telling them what to do. Come on. You can't come into as an outsider and go in. It's like me coming up to Scotland and telling the SNP, the party up here, say, you need to do this. They laugh, they go, you from England? Yeah. Feck off. Don't come here telling us what to do. You know what I mean? And I've just come up here. I remember once um, I was going back down to visit my son and daughter because at the time my son and daughter was still living down in England. And I was going back down to visit them. And they go, going, oh, are you going back home? And I looked at this one woman and she said, I said, home? I said, I am home. This is my home. They said, but you're going back down to England. I said, yes, I'm going to visit my son and daughter. Right? And she went, but that's your home. I said, no, my home is where I live. And I live here in Scotland. This is my home now. I accept Scotland for all their quirky little ways and how they talk and what they eat. And some of this stuff is vile. <laughs> right, but... I accept their ways, and that is my way. Alright? So, but it's just like me coming up here and saying, oh, you, got, you can't do that, you need to do this. They kick me out with the right foot, right back over that border. So you can't go into another state and start, start saying, I don't like the drugs. I don't like some of the county sheriff's office. I really don't. But I, I wouldn't go there and start stay, saying to the people who live in Tennessee, you need to start voting these people out. You're telling everyone what they should be doing, what to do. You can't do that. But... As I said, this was just to see, because of that interview that was done with Seth Rogers, and I liked that interview because he's fighting back again. It's like when Tony came on the scenes, he did shut him up. He shut him up. Right? And it did help for a while because then he was just letting Chris do all the talking. And Chris was just digging and digging and digging. Katie went quiet. But Chris didn't. He kept digging and digging. So I thought, let him keep digging. He might bury himself one day. Right? So by shutting Seth down, let Chris open up. But at the same time, it shut Katie down whether that was her choice or whether that was Chris's choice, we don't know. He says it's her choice that she don't want to talk. I don't really believe that. I think it's his way of saying, don't talk because you're going to say something and every time you say something, they're picking it apart and they're going to find out the truth because you're going to slip up and you're going to say something. You know what I mean? That's why I think, I think she's not talking. Because he don't want her talking. And why doesn't he want her talking? Because she knows something. And as we said, the more she talks, the more we pick it apart. And we're finding, and she slips up. She's slipping up. And what mother sits there in an interview with her partner, her husband, and they both sit there and they say, the door is open all the time, just waiting for him to walk through it again. What mother then 
locks that door and leaves the house. Oh, so your son's coming home, but he's going, you're not going to be there. Okay. So have you left a note on the front door saying, well, we're not here again at wherever? No, because you know he's not coming home. As Chris keeps stating, when when that picture come out of that lad, it wasn't him. It's not him. Straight away, Chris come out and say, that's not Sebastian. How the hell do you know that wasn't Sebastian? Like that. Click of a finger, it's not Sebastian. How can you say that? Because he knows where Sebastian is. He said before. He'll never be found. How can you say that? Oh, I'm sorry. Because he knows where he is. That's how he knows he'll never be found. Come on, law enforcement. If we're picking up on these things that he says, why aren't you? My cat's up to something and I'm about to go and kill him. Why aren't you picking up on what he says? We've been saying this for months now, for months and months and months about this. These little things he says, you'll not find him. It's not him. Oh, and all these things about the night, the night he went missing. If he could climb out the bedroom window, we would have heard him. If he went out that back door, we would have heard him. We, we, where's the we? Uh, not me. And why were the dogs put in the cat, um, the cage? Normally, I was led to believe that when he was out of the house, when he was at work, the dog slept in the bedroom with her. They only slept in the cage when he was there because he wouldn't want the dogs in the bedroom. And what's happened to those dogs? Can anyone tell me what happened to those dogs? Have they still got those dogs? I heard they uh, rehomed them or gave them away or something. Sounds like he cremated him. Hmm. Now we're going back to the funeral home thing. Now, they say they don't own a funeral home, but they manage a funeral home. It's got a relative who manages a funeral home. Okay, he don't own it, he's a manager of a funeral home, from what I've been, what I heard. So, could he have been cremated? But, I do believe all, all funeral homes have audits, yeah, audits, and they have to account for everybody that, every person that is cremated, right? So, was a, a body cremated somewhere that shouldn't have been cremated? But I just feel like Katie was grieving. She was grieving. She was going through that grieving process. She probably still is. But she's gone past that despair and anger and all that. Like now it's like she's just sad. I know that feeling. You know what I mean? Where you go past the anger and the despair and all that, like when you lose someone. And then you're just sad that that person's no longer with you. And you turn around, you say, you think, and you sit there and you think, I wish that, I wish he was here now, I could, you know what I mean? I wish I could talk to them now, I wish I could say this to them now. You know what I mean? She's at that stage. Seth hasn't reach that stage at all. And I I wish he would. I wish he would somehow sort of accept the fact that Sebastian might not come back alive. 
I wish you could just accept just a little inch, a little bit of that. Because we don't know. We've heard of cases where people have been found two years later, three years, four, five years later, you know what I mean? But I just wish... I, I've just got this feeling that he isn't no more. I've just got this nasty feeling. About a month or so ago, I was thought, well, yes, he's alive. I'm sorry, he's definitely alive. He's being hidden somewhere. But why would they hide him for this long? What are they going to gain from hiding him somewhere? They're not going to gain nothing. But what got me was the interview that was done with a relative of Katie's. Who did that interview now? I can't remember. But she says all her family, Katie's side of the family, are very quiet. Now, normally they say when anything happens in the family, they all come together to support and help each other out. But no one in her family is talking. Which I find weird. I find that very weird, a bit suspicious. Why aren't they talking? If this is a family crisis and normally the family come together to help each other, why are they not coming together to help? Why have they gone zipped it and like, no, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, I wasn't there, nothing to see here, carry on. Why have they gone like that? Could someone in her family know something and not saying anything and that's why they're going quiet? If you don't say nothing, they, nothing can be questioned, you know what I mean? They're not going to rip us apart on YouTube. But I think it's very weird how her side of the family, like her cousins and all that lot, are not saying nothing. So, and as she said, there's only one person who could get it to open up. Well, there was two. That was a grandfather. Right? And there's only one other person who could uh, get it to open up, and that would be, I think it's her grandmother. Yeah, be a grandmother. Right? Her grandmother is in touch with, G with Katie. The aunt or whatever said so. That she's in touch with Katie, she speaks to Katie. So why hasn't she got it to open up? If she's the only other person that could get Katie to open up, why hasn't she? If she's talking to Katie, she's in contact with Katie, why is she not opening up to her? Why can she not get her to tell the truth? Tell us, not the truth, but what happened? Something happened, something night. I don't care what anyone says, something happened in that house. And it was either carried out the house, Right, over to a car or over to someone who's waiting there. Right, or who was took out the house in the morning because he's putting the back of the boot of the car. Right, she's gone out to drive around to make out she's looking for a son, met up with someone, passed him over. Boom. But what are they going to do with it then? What are they doing with the body? Where are they going to put? Did they search any of these um, storage units that he's supposed to have? Did they search any of these sort of storage units? We've not heard about any of these searches of storage units. He's supposed to have a storage unit. And right next to that market store is a storage unit. And it was there where so several people, not one person, but several people said they see Kathy Barisov's car. Two and two, Kathy Barisov's storage union. 
on the Monday morning. Sebastian goes missing. You know what I mean? Just start. Put the dots together, as Seth says. Join the dots up. Because, and then if you come to, where you can't join a dot up because it's too big a space, well, what happens? Why not? Why can't you join this dot up to that dot? Is there something missing to help you join it up? What happened? And as long as I keep quiet, they'll never find out. But they did arrest the, the adopted parents, didn't they? Those two little boys that went missing, who they've never found. What was their name again? Can't think of the names. Right? Two years after they went missing, it's not even been a year yet, so you, we don't know. We've got to just keep pushing and pushing and keeping his name out there. Without having a go, like some YouTubers do, without literally having a go at KT or Chris. Because I thought they went, I thought, I knew Katie had gone quiet, but I thought Chris had gone quiet because he had his daughter over the summer holidays. And perhaps that was one of the uh, conditions you're not to go on YouTube. Yeah. So, but he hasn't come back on YouTube, has he? Because he's not well liked. No one wants him no more. No one wants Chris on their channel no more because he's arrogant, he's nasty, he's violent, he's a piece of ish. But I will go and watch Silver's that video again. I'll watch it all the way through. I'll go and watch it now when I log off. I need to have something to eat. I know it's gone 12 o'clock at night, but I need to go and get something to eat. Anyway, thank you for being here with me tonight. I'm going to leave it there. And but there's so many possibilities still left open. So many possibilities. So as I said, I'm going to leave it there. I will check into White House, is it, that area. I'm going to do a Google Earth search right there. And just find possible places. You know what I mean? So until then, I'll be back tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, unless something happens on this case, which I can't see happening, tomorrow night I am doing a, a live on the... Um, Oh, those two brothers that are in jail. I can't think of the name. Men Menendez brothers. The brothers who killed their parents. And well, I'm doing a live tomorrow about them. And so I'll see you all tomorrow night. Use your time. Use your place. All right, until then, good night. And please give this video a like, share, comment. And you can now not just subscribe, which I'd love you to do, you can now become a member. So please stay safe. Talk tomorrow.
everything I do so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that, spitting slow, spitting fast I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness, a reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're with my time, you're delirious Mysterious, because you hide behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains that last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help, I had to do it all myself. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take, I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take, I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. Of being incompetent Mental health is confidence Dreams and some honestness I'm not here to save the day That's for you to take away I could play a million mind games But instead of say Something not illogical Something that is topical Rub it on and watch it go Make yourself unstoppable Dreams are irresponsible But they're always possible If you just believe You could be so remarkable Thoughts in my head A collage and they spread I'll be great one day Going off of my meds No, I'm not giving up No, I'm not giving in I will make it to the top Taking off in the wind I gotta make it I'm saving every day to take